So what am I supposed to do? You don't have to be the one to lose. You don't have to be the one to lie. You know, it's in there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool, right? That is cool. It's, it's funny neat. how things come around. Yeah, it's something. All right. Woo. Hello, hello. Why am I yawning, yawning already? <clears throat> it's been a long day. It's been a gloomy day. We had uh, some uh, quite the uh, snowfall today. So, well, I mean, on the grand scheme of things, it's pretty mild. Yeah, it's gonna get pretty, pretty mm-hmm. brutal out there. But damn, it is. We gotta get a heater down. Yeah, here. we do. It's we, a little cold. Got this little dinky heater over there. It's like this big. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, it works. It if works. I leave it in my bedroom and, well, my studio, if I leave it in the studio, like overnight with the door closed, it's like, yeah, I'm not supposed to leave that on overnight, but sometimes I do anyway. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it's really fucking warm in there, so. That's good. I like what you did in there. It's coming along. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Little, little thing. Little vocal booth. Makeshift yeah. vocal booth. It's cool. It's pretty cool. I like the placement of the couch a lot better that is nice yeah you yeah. so now oh. you can actually see the what you're doing what you're doing on the yeah. monitor i mean it's basically in the same spot just move forward but yeah looks good cool cool so this is episode four episode four of the are. broken view podcast here we are yeah no um if we sound fucking exhausted sorry guys we've been like working on this oh god yeah this yeah video. next video I, it's funny we have like such a tight deadline for that video. We did it to our fucking selves, <laughs> and it's probably the most ambitious video to date. Something like that. <laughs> so something like that. Like we're we're dealing with uh, CGI and shit, and compositing videos together, and uh, we're figuring it out. I mean, we are. I I think we brushed on it in the last episode, but we are by no means any kind of professional when it comes to uh vfx and uh video compositing but mm. uh it's it's a whole new territory that's opening up some cool doors for some ideas for videos that we have wanted to do for a while and but it is uh it's definitely a learning curve for mm. sure so it's um well i mean this whole like <clears throat> this whole idea that we are doing, uh, I was never really sure that we would actually be able to do it with um, VFX. I always saw it done pretty practically, uh, practically. But yeah, but then again, um, oddly enough, it seems like that would be even harder to do it practically. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff. I can't wait to talk about it though. I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to say what it is to spoil mm-hmm. anything. Because uh, mm-hmm. I'll just say this: our d- our deadline we're setting for ourselves is ten days from now. <laughs> it's ten days. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, if yeah. you listen to the Broken View podcast, maybe we can. Li- yeah, I mean, we can give them first scoop. The next single comes out on the fifteenth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys get first scoop. So December fifteenth is the next There's perks single. of listening to us bicker for two yeah. and a half hours. <laughs> now you, you go. know the next single comes out on the fifteenth. Yeah, people and on it, our YouTube membership actually. Uh, if you were part of the YouTube membership uh, and you hung out with us on Friday, uh, the Friday before actually, not this past Friday, but the Friday before, mm. actually got to hear the new single because I played it. Uh, cool. I played it for them. Cool, cool. And they really dig it. They really like it. By the way, speaking of song, I have these uh, little. It was a gift. A it was vinyl. a Christmas gift. I have these little mini vinyl things, and um, what are they? Coasters. They're coasters, but they have funny like renditions of the real song title. So on this one, it says "Hotel Cauliflower." <laughs> I have the I have the bright side of the moon. The bright side of the moon. <laughs> Interesting. I like it. Yeah, I got Eagles, and he got fucking Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, love it. Oh, that's cool. Also, I am enjoying a wild range. Oh yeah, how is that? Um. Not my favorite, yeah. But like, can't what Aldi came from Aldi. Yeah, it's like Aldi beer. Um, because I guess <laughs> Aldi sells beer now. That's and cool. we were there today, grocery shopping, and I was like, and she looks over and she's like, "Hey, they sell beer now." I was like, "What yeah. the fuck?" And they had like 
Imperial IPAs and shit. So I was like, that's my fave. So I got this. It's called Wild Range Brewing Company. And it's an Imperial IPA. And it is, where are they from again? She just said it. They are from Rochester, New York. Oh, okay. So, so they're local. Local-ish. Local-ish. Local-ish for us. So, yep. Cool. It's cool. It's got Did like, you say it tasted like soda? <laughs> it reminds me of a soda. I don't know what soda. Hmm. Interesting. A beer that tastes like soda. I don't know what it is, man. Hmm. Not sure. Oh, we're giving these people some ASMR today. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> some people are like completely like, just com- like absolutely hate that shit. So really? Like, yeah. I mean, it was like a probably a, if I were to guess, it's a huge population of people who are just like fucking cringe at that. Like the same. The like ASMR stuff. Well, I, I used to, it's probably similar to like sensations or sounds like, um, like styrofoam. I used to be reactive to styrofoam. Like I used to be like, it used to make me feel like my skin uh, would crawl. I remember that. Not anymore though. That's weird, yeah. No, no really I remember. Anymore. I remember that. I forgot what I got in the mail, but I opened it in front of you. And you're like, ah, stop! <laughs> what are just, you doing? You know, it might just be different kinds of styrofoam because yeah. I know there's there's like different kinds. Yeah. yeah, it's like the cheaper kind, and then there's like the more like thicker kind. And yeah, I think it's the really cheap stuff that bothers me, like the packing peanuts or something. No, not the packing peanuts. It's like, you know, when you pick up styrofoam, sometimes it feels really weighty and sometimes really hollow. Yeah, it's like the really hollow stuff. That's the <laughs> yeah. stuff that really bothers me. I don't know. That's strange. It doesn't really bother me no more. But hmm. when I was a kid, it used to bother the shit out of me. Interesting. But yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited. Going back to the the next uh, series of videos here, I'm very excited to go down this route. It's not going to be so. It's not connected to the current storyline. No. That's gonna be buttoned up. We're 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 starting a new one. That one will finish in this cycle of songs. Yes, absolutely. But uh, we're starting a, a another little adventurous journey, I guess you can say, <laughs> with these music videos. And um, I really like the the story that we're going after i like i like the start i think it, it, it's a good start yeah um uh i don't know i wish i could see people's reactions to it so if you have like a reaction channel oh yeah react to it because I, I would love to i fucking love watching reaction videos to our yeah. stuff lee it's like a huge family thing yeah we all sit around and watch them we should see if lee wants to come on yeah he probably would too he he's, seems like a good dude he's got a lot of uh Batman stuff in the background mm-hmm. of his videos. Oh yeah, so do we. <clears throat> Mainly Justice League stuff. Justice but, League, yeah. but he's got a uh, Christopher Nolan's series, mm-hmm. Dark Knight stuff. I like the idea of the video. I mean, we can only be as vague as vague can get, but um, I was thinking of like other avenues to take it in other videos. So mm-hmm. I was like, so we have our like two. That are like the main thing mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. And I had an idea for like um, a different song on the album where you could take it from like a point of a different perspective. Oh, like so, BVS? In a way. So, you know, that. <laughs> all right. So, you know, the note, they don't know anything about it yet. Yeah. It's not spoiling anything. So, you know, the note. Yeah. Following how that note got, got there, there. Yeah. And then where that person went after they put it there. That's cool. With the fool. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So cool. Saying. Yeah. I can. obviously Taylor's. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, that character. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I know listeners right now are like, "What are they talking? What about? does that mean? What does that yeah, mean?" Yeah. No. I mean. Uh. Yeah. That's just. A that's thought really I had. cool. It's just a thought I had. That's really cool. I think it'll be cool to figure out, you know, where to take that. Because mm-hmm. in this kind of world, there's so many. This is what I love about doing this, by the way, is that we come up <laughs> with like these really unique ideas to make all these work together. Mm-hmm. Like 
versus if we were like, all right, what what can we do for this video? And like, come up with an entirely new concept. Well, frankly, well, what how, what how can we take what we already built? It's easier and like it's easier to build off what you already have. Yeah, it is. I find it way easier than really? coming up with like new ideas and all that stuff. Interesting. I think it's easier because you're like, okay, because I never would have gotten the idea to do what I just said in the most vague way possible yeah. to do that if we hadn't have just came up with this idea. So it's like every idea is going to just branch off of one other idea mm-hmm. when you're doing like a cinematic universe or whatever the fuck, yeah. you know, when you're doing like a uh, connective story. And I think yeah. that's just really cool. And I know other bands have done this in the past. It's mm-hmm. not just like exclusive to the broken view, but no. not many. Yeah, not many. Cause it's cool. I mean, I kind of like how the videos are not really like. In my head, they they can they they should be something so much more like, like greater than the band, you know? Because yeah. the band, we're a band. We'll get on the stage, play the songs, do the shit. Yeah. But in another world, the music is telling these really really crazy stories. Yeah. And I think that's really cool it's almost like another level to being just a band you know it's like yeah. oh now we're like a film yeah studio <laughs> in no. like a weird way you know because no. we're telling these stories and i can tell you guys right now and i know tyler will agree with me the next story that we're telling <laughs> will definitely be more cohesive because we actually knew from the get-go that we were telling a larger story yeah so, so it's going to feel more like thought out yeah well, it's cool because we yeah. ha- we had an idea for uh, the one song, mm. one unnamed song <laughs> on this uh, next record. You had that idea for a oh, while. yeah. I and actually just I- found the, uh, there's a clip of me after I wrote the solo for that song. Oh, really? And it like popped up on my, uh, my Snapchat memories. And I was oh, like, holy cool. shit, look at that. That's cool. That is cool about like the memories thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've had the idea for yeah, it's it's been a long in, time. It's been in the back of our uh, vault, I guess you can say, for a while. And uh, don't ask me how I got this idea. Yeah, I have no fucking idea. Um, maybe when it comes out, I can talk more about it. But like, I don't know. I was watching some movies, and I was like, "Hey, what a cool thing that would be." Yeah. You know, I just, uh, and I remember, you know, I was originally going to like, you know, do like a separate side thing aside from the band during COVID and I was going to like put this song out. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, like I said at that time, I was like, and I'm glad I waited because Matt Noveski made sure the song was a lot cooler. Um, And we all did too, you know, it wasn't all just Matt, but I mean, he had a huge part in it, Mm -hmm. you know, just him reworking the bass line I wrote. Oh yeah, it was cool. Cool in itself. Yeah, you know, it's still the same thing I wrote. He just basically took some notes out. You yeah. know, which is really funny. Yeah, it's so weird the way that works out. But yeah. I mean, um, he did add the one note though. Beating doom do. He added that little guy, which is cool. That was never there. But mm. yeah, um, I don't know. This is a cool idea. I wish I could talk more about it. That's what, you know, I, I wish we couldn't, wish it didn't have to be so vague. I know. I don't want to say anything because I, we can't. We can't. We literally can't because if we do, it'll, it'll make the video not. And I wonder how long it's going to take watching the next music video that comes out next week. Yeah. Jesus, that's scary. It comes out next week. Oh boy. Pretty much. Gonna yeah. get to work. Oh yeah, when this podcast comes out, it's next week. <laughs> yeah, it is a week from today. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. Fuck. Mm-hmm. But that means we just have to get to work. But yeah, yeah. The video. Um, you can't really say anything. But I mean, I'm curious to know how long it's going to take throughout the video or at yeah. all if yeah. they're going to catch on. What's happening? To what's happening. Maybe because it's left very, 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 very minimal. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see. I'm curious. Well, I want I want there to be more questions like unanswered by the end of it. I want the viewer to have more questions. Um yeah, a this, lot's gonna be an- they're gonna know what's going on though. Yeah. They're but, gonna know what the fuck's happening. I mean, like, they're yeah. gonna know. Yeah. 
But either way. But this can't be fun. This is fun for us. This can't be fun for people. They're probably so <laughs> mad. They're probably like, what the fuck are they talking about? I know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yes. <clears throat> it, it will it will come out for sure. Mm. What's going on? But I speaking of other music really videos. Excited. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is exciting. Uh, but speaking of our other music videos, um, some some fans have oh, right, right, right. asked us. Yeah, we're, to dive deep a little more. We're on the topic, I guess, of yeah. uh, these videos. Ordinary Love. Uh, question here. What do we got? Uh, they asked... Is this the first? Yeah. The candle scene in the new music video and the open book, is there any specific meaning behind that specific book and candle being picked up and smelt, etc.? Or was it basically just to show how confused and groggy Austin's character was after leaving the hospital trying to figure out and recollect what had happened to him, including all of the memories that he can't recall, hence the wedding video? And Yeah, you nailed it. So, second, yeah. Pretty much the second one. Yeah. He, you know, that's why he's like touching the wall. Yeah. Where he feels the wall. Maybe like he remembered something. He's trying to remember. He's just trying yeah. to remember something. So he's, you know, he's trying to remember anything. So he's yeah. smelling candles. He's looking at books. He's like, is something here going to spark a memory of mine? Mm-hmm. Wasn't the book a funny book, though? What was the book? I'm pretty sure the book was uh, War of the Worlds. Was it? I think so. That was War of the Worlds? Which is hilarious, speaking of. <laughs> I know it's not like. Uh, I won't say anything. But that's kind of that's ironic. That's cool. It's kind was of it War of the Worlds? Oh, uh, yeah. I think so. I'm almost 90%. My dad has, it's a little red book, right? It was the little red book, right? I don't know if it was a little red book. I think it was maroon. Oh, it's not. Yeah, no, it's like a, it's not like red, red. It's. Huh. Yeah. Was it War of the Worlds? I don't know why I'm thinking it was. My dad has this really cool War of the Worlds book. Or maybe not. Maybe it's not War of the Worlds. I don't remember what it was. It definitely was not. I know the book you're talking about and the cover. It's not War of the World. Wasn't it something goofy? It was something silly. I don't remember. All right, I'm going to have to find the book. Next podcast, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring the book on and see. Because maybe there is. I mean, <sighs> we had no idea that the time that we chose in Start Over was like a significant time. No. And like, I think, what, Hannah or something? Somebody found like the meaning of that number specifically 743 and had something yeah. that was like coincided with the meaning of the video like almost to a t <laughs> yeah something like that um but yeah I, yeah you hit the nail on the head it's it's basically yeah. just my character was like what the fuck what is all this stuff i know it but i don't know it you know yeah it's familiar but not familiar yeah you know so it's just trying to become familiar with yeah his life yeah. So we can remember it, which will all make more sense in the next one. Yeah. Not the next video that we're releasing, because the next video we're releasing is the start of a new story. Yeah. But in the next installment slash the conclusion final. <laughs> to this story that we started with, start over, you're not alone. But yeah. I love in that one, in part four, it all makes sense. Yeah. So it'd be cool to do like a big compilation video, yeah, like a super cut. Supercut. Yeah. No. Well, we talked about that too. Yeah, that would be cool. Just uh, to like really for sure hone it in. But podcast question. What's the story behind something better, the song and the video? First song by you guys I heard, and the one that made me fall in love with your band and unintentionally became the soundtrack for a pivotal relationship in my life that I'm trying to work through. Um first of all, thank you so much for listening. Yeah. And I'm um, glad you fell in love with our music. And I hope your relationship works out for the better. Uh, as far as the story for something better, the song and the video. First, okay. What was the story? I mean, the story is exactly what what is on the, the screen there. Um, we talked about this a lot in episode one, actually. Yeah. It's basically just, you know, a lot of, a lot of people my age, I would imagine... Um, you know, you have that moment where you broke up with a girl. It's been a long time since you've seen him or whatever, you know, you mm-hmm. don't talk anymore. And you think every time you go out in public, you wish you 
everyone in the crowd was a down. Yeah. You just wish you could bump into them and or something like that, you know? Yeah. So the idea of the video is that, um, you know, at the beginning is actually where the video ends. So my character's on the couch with his face busts it open and then it takes you back. Yeah. Um, and then you see, you know, I'm just like on a bender in a sense, you know, I'm just yeah. like, uh, whatever going out and trying to contact this girl and she's just like not having it. So she's like, fuck you, fuck you. And then I, we just happen to run into each other at this bar. Yeah. And then I start shit. Yeah. And I get my, cause ass, she's with someone else. Cause yeah. she's with someone else and I get my ass handed to me. Yeah. And then at the end, you know, I'm like lighting my cigarette the whole video. So I'm like, look at the lighter and I move on and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think we delve way deeper into it in episode one. Yeah. You can go back and watch that. Um, yeah. As far as the song, same thing. Yeah. Same exact thing. It's just about. I remember. I remember. I have a very fond uh, a memory. toxic relationship. Yeah. I have a very fond memory of like. I was trying to figure out the music video, and I just flat out asked you, like, "What is the actual true meaning of the song?" And you kind of told me. The, yeah. the, the scenario and yep. we just kind of took that and made it a little more dramatic and ran with it. Yeah, I mean, the idea <laughs> of the song is calling someone uh, years of a relationship just kind of like not being together and yeah. you're, you're broken up and you're you're trying to contact them and you have all these things that you're that you're thinking about throughout all this time that you haven't been together and you're just like, this is what I need to say. This is what I've always needed to say and now I have my thoughts in the right place but like they're yeah. somewhat moving on and you are finding it harder to move on because you're the one who was lied to and cheated. At, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I think it's something everybody um, has been through. Yeah. Probably why the song has so many fucking views <laughs> and uh, yeah. shares and all that stuff. So yeah, glad you enjoyed this stuff. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And I hope I explained it better than, uh, Anybody could. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Well, thank you. Uh, love it that you are doing a podcast. Oh, sweet. Uh, all right, where's the, here we go. Sorry. I have bad eyes. This is very small. <laughs> so are you two guys the main members of The Broken View and the other guys are really session players? What happened to the African dude? Um he was really good. How do you come up with your drum beats and patterns? There's like a lot of, oh, questions. There's a lot of questions. Okay. All so right. there's a bunch of questions. Let's start with the first one. Okay. What was the first one? So are you guys like the two main members of the band? Uh, and the other guys are like session players. Yeah. So, I mean, not really session players. Not, yeah. So Austin and I started this thing back in the 2018. Um, and we wrote something better together and produced that together and the EP, yeah. Yeah. And um that was pretty much the 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 start of it, the whole thing. And um we pretty much wanted after that we were just like, All right, well we got these these songs. Next step is to bring them live. So we started going through people that enjoyed the music. And wanted mm-hmm. to play it live with us. And that's kind of like, that's pretty much why there were so many lineup changes throughout the videos and stuff. Is that we, there was never really like a set <clears throat> lineup that we ever had um, until John and Joe, really. Right, 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 right. Um, and that's including Day, who um, was, that, I was believe, the, Yeah, was that's the, what he was asking. He's, was he the bass player. Where, where Day w- went off to. And he yeah. says Day was really good. Yeah. So. No, he was definitely cool. Um, but yeah, he, he left. He wanted to do something else. Yep. And um totally fine. And um he uh um yeah, he, he how many he, he was only with us for not a long time. Not a long Just time. Just like no. the post production of On the Mend. Yeah. Um really. That's it. You know. Yeah. And um but when, as far as like it came to producing the music and um, even writing, um, it's mainly been one you writing, yeah, 
and John and Jove on on uh, definitely helped. Yeah, they pitched in a lot with this album. Definitely have helped. Yeah, with this album. So like, I had like all these songs, and um, you know, I had a giant chunk of songs. <laughs> yeah, and I I would call people. You know, I would call Taylor. I would call John. I would call Joe when I needed you know mm-hmm. a specific idea or talent that I would thought they could help with. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I. It just really, uh, you know, it's it's just people who are they're good musicians, and, and if yeah. I and if I have a moment where I'm like, I want to call them and see yeah. what they think about this idea, or let me call the whole band and everybody comes over and we all sit down. That happens very rarely, but when it does, yeah. you know, sometimes cool things happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but, it's just yeah, it's mainly me and Tyler's like yeah. It's kind of like our our baby. It's like our baby, but. and we kind of you know we we like to surround ourselves with good musicians. And yeah, they come and go as yeah. any other project. I mean, that is just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it definitely know. gets it's 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 hard now, man. Like, it is. Yeah. It's a hard thing to commit to something. It is like this. That's so sometimes up in the air. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that mm-hmm. you know not nobody even thinks even us like we never thought no we'd be doing half the shit that we have to do to you know maintain that's true maintain this thing and yeah it's all part of the fun though but yeah um, exactly okay and then he then he said in the same thing so it was like four questions uh how do you come up with drum beats and patterns how do you get it? oh there's it's okay there's a bunch of questions in there about drums so it's how do you come up with drum beats and patterns and where do you get inspiration for drums? Mm. So a lot of it, like, <clears throat> if it's something that, like, because you, you'll, like, make almost, like, pop versions of some of these songs. And that's always weird because I'm like, okay. So like, how do you... How do you make it fit this like shape that we're trying to do? I, I that was like a yeah. I feel like that was on the men situation. Yeah, <laughs> that was tough. Like the the shape of things is probably a little more malleable these days. Yeah. Um. But the at the beginning of our, our yeah, banding, it, it was very much like. Um, I feel like we weren't as talented musicians back then. I feel like yeah. it was difficult for both of us to like see uh, the bigger picture. Yeah. And I think, you know, because there is no, there's no wrong or right idea. Right. Or wrong or right sound. Right. There is no such thing as genre. Like it does not matter. Yeah. It's whatever and, makes you yeah. feel something in that, in that moment. No. But I would say like, you know, for this upcoming record, it's the first time that we did live drums, which yeah. was cool. And before that, uh, I always would program parts, or even Austin would program parts. Yeah. And um, in the computer, and then I would learn it later. Yeah. Which kind of happened with this too, because all the demos that I had had like the yeah the prog program drums. Yeah. And then that, but then, you still always like tinker with like fills and stuff. Yeah. And even if like the yeah. drum beat that I came up with originally is still yeah. like there. Yeah. You still are always like working on fills because. Yeah. I don't and, know. I write drum fills like a guitar player would drum fill, I guess. Yeah. And, um, but as far as I would say it, it, it just varies really because it's like on something better. Like, all I feel is you, that was, like, it started out as, like, a MIDI loop, and then we, I was, like, tweaking with, like, the hi-hat groove, and it came up with a, cut. oh, yeah, 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 cut. and it was, like, something else completely different uh, before that, but it had, like, this, like, almost, like, whipping feel to it, like, something I like that. I liked it because it reminded me of a heartbeat. That too, yeah. Pato. And um, Pato. so you there know? was like certain situations, and then like something for uh, like mm-hmm. what could be worse. I remember <laughs> sitting on a on a pad, yep. And I really liked uh, 
at the time a band called Oceans A Alaska. And there's a song called um, Hansha, which uh, does this really cool like drum roll groove in the verses. And I really wanted like something like that. And so that kind of sparked the marching snare kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think I remember saying to you, I was like, um, I remember showing you when we made what could be worse. Cause what did I show you? Oh, I showed you, um, the fucking song is that called the worry list? I showed you the worry oh, yeah. list and I was like, you know, it's got like, the, like that, yeah. the brush beat. And you were like, <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. So we made like a combo of like yeah. what you were thinking and what I was thinking. So, yep. It's funny and, um, the way that works. I remember writing the lyrics for that song. That was fucking crazy. I wrote oh, that yeah. All you, in one night. Oh, at the bar, right? No, 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 no. Weren't you at the, working at the City Beer Hall? Uh, I was working at the City Beer Hall when I came up with this idea for the whole song. Oh, that's yeah, right. And I had yeah. like a voice memo in my phone. Yeah, I and remember. then we came over to your. I went, came over to your house like the same day and yeah. did the guitar part. But then all the lyrics, we we had to get the lyrics. We didn't have any drums in it. Do you remember that fucking acoustic guitar? Uh, Trying yeah. To record that? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can talk about it because I bet the fucking people listening are probably like, please talk about it. No. Um, we tried how many fucking guitars and it was just... Okay, we tried like four different acoustic guitars and then we <laughs> went over... Happy we went over to fucking John Felino's studio yep. and we sat there and there and we were like, he's got like all the real shit, man, sitting yep. down. So we like recorded it with that. Still was just Yeah, not you right. know, here's what it was. It was always right. It was probably right eight guitars in, okay? <laughs> if not two, if yeah. not the first try. Yeah. It was just the fact that our ears were burnt. We tried that a real to thing, hear man. something way too much. Yeah, that's um, a real thing. But now we, you discovered that a 57 Seven. is yeah. just the way to record an acoustic guitar. 57, yeah. Right at the 12th fret. What a I, stupid thing. I uh, Yeah, we tried so many different microphones and, and uh, different miking techniques mm-hmm. and using the DI and blending all this shit. And it just yeah. always sounded so like... Oh yeah, gross to me. Yeah, and we saw we we pingy. we landed on something. And then for the record, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can say I got no shame. That is a, a, a no, 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 no. We can say it. Yeah, it, that is a fake MIDI guitar. That's a MIDI guitar. That yeah. is a MIDI guitar. Yeah, it, that is played on the piano and run through a guitar uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, sure is sim on contact. Oh yeah. And, uh, it didn't sound bad. It still sound, sounds good. Sounds great. Yeah, you know, it, it works. I mean, no one is, has ever been like. I remember even like with Johnny the, with the drums. When I showed Johnny that and I told him that it was a fake acoustic guitar, he was like, "What?" Yeah, I was like, "Yeah, it's fake." He's like, "No, it's not." I was like, "Yes, it is. That's MIDI." Johnny even said that. Yeah. I remember telling him that he was like, "What the fuck? It yeah. Sounds good." I was like, "I know." And I remember That's why everybody. We used it. <laughs> I remember everybody asking me, "Where did you guys record the drums?" I was like, oh no, they're programmed. In, they're, on something better? Yeah. That everyone wanted Nobody to know knew where we, that was programmed. I no. fucking know. Oh duh. Yeah. We listen know. to that shit now and I'm we like, know. what the yeah. fuck? Everyone thought it was it sounds like a robot. Because that was that was <laughs> like when uh so we used a GGD monitor massive. And that was like when it first came out. It's good ass samples too. I mean it's great. Yeah. It's the guys from uh uh periphery. It's uh Nolly, get good and um Misha, Misha Mansour. And that that's like their company. And um if you know if you know Nolly, he's one of the best engineers, mix engineers ever, honestly. Yeah. At least I don't know him. Or of him, I don't think. Who is it? His name's Nolly. Nolly. Um with an N or a K or something. Uh N. N. And uh He's um he's he's fucking great at what he does. Mm-hmm. And same thing, like get it right in the recording and you don't have to do do much to it to make it sound mm-hmm. great. That's kinda like what we learned over the years. It's like when you're Keep young it simple, stupid. Yeah, when when you're young, you're always like, Oh, what's 
what's this do? What's this do? What's this? And then oh, your chain just becomes like a long laundry list of mm-hmm. shit. And then you bypass it. And it's like, oh, wow, this was way better before I tinkered with it. So that's also probably why the acoustic guitar and what could be worse. We probably just tinkered too much. Honestly. Well, definitely, because you kept being like, there's a frequency in there. And I was like, it's an acoustic guitar. Yeah. There's going to be lots of frequencies. Yeah. yeah. It's a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> It was like, just a frequency in there. It was so, I tried to tell you. There were so many pingy little yeah. sh- nodes and shit. I tried to tell you, though. I was like, that's what an acoustic guitar does. Yeah. And like... You know? That's what they do. There's certain things that you can do to like combat. And like, oh, you're getting drinks delivered I'm now. Getting like, delivered. Thank you, babe. <laughs> wow. Thank you, baby. We got a delivery service. Got the, well, here. dude, I can't fucking drink this anymore. I was just like, uh, <laughs> it's not good. No fucking. I'm not saying it's not good. I drank most of it. It's just, bro, not, it's not, not as good as Dogfish Head. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. This is like the best beer, and this is not sponsored, y'all. But like, 60 minute IPA uh, by Dogfish Head is probably one of the best beers ever made, including like uh, the 90 minute IPA. That one's good too. Hmm. Cool. I wish I wish we could get sponsored by some beer reps. That'd be that would be you cool. Know what man. I'm saying? That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd be sick. I'd do it. Yeah. No, uh, the uh oh, we oh yeah, the uh no. acoustic guitar. <laughs> Much better. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh like the acoustic guitar? Yeah. Yeah, there, yeah. There's there's, fucking, there, there's certain whatever. Cause like when you hit certain notes. There's certain frequencies that, yeah, and harmonics that come out with it. Let there it are, go. Let there it go. are certain things that you can do because some of it can be quite distracting. But at the end of the day, none of it ever in, distracted me in the uh, in that song. grand scheme. Because you were like a mix. You were like, man, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this yeah. one. I remember it vividly because I kept going, Tyler. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I hear what you're hearing, but like, it's supposed to be there. And you were like, No. I was yeah. like, Yeah. So yeah. I just like, I'm gonna say, like, I'll throw that on you. Yeah. That was all you. No. Yeah, you were like, sure. Let's try another guitar, and I was like, Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> I just yep. wanted to be done with it, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why I don't want to talk about it ever because it's mm-hmm. like I was just like sitting there like, Oh. My God. Yeah. I was cool with this after the first guitar. Every time, by the way, every time we record an acoustic guitar, I'm always happy with the first one and you aren't. Really? I always like the first one. That's funny. Seriously, we ended up using the first guitar in um Does It Make You Happy? Because we tried to retrack it with the Taylor and I was like Well that don't sound right. Well that was we used the Taylor we, in the we left had to, and right, though. Well, no, I remember I wanted to retract that because you had edited it too much. Yeah, and then we found the OGs. And then you found, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we were able to because I remember use that. Because ta- there was a lot of like weird... Well, I remember telling you when I shit. sent you the song, I said, look in the audio files. The OGs are probably in there. And then I remember we got there at the session and I was like, I told you this in the text. And you were like, no, you didn't. I was like, yes, I did. They're in there. Yeah. They're fucking in there. Yeah. They're in the audio file. I just don't know where they are. Yeah. Uh, but they're in there. Um, and you found them and then we fixed it. But still, yeah. but still, there was still a conversation. I remember it perfectly. Everyone was like, well, at least I think mainly you, were like, let's retract it with the tailor. And I was like, why? It sounds good. It sounds yeah. good. And you were like, no, it's got to be tra- retract. You were like, it's not right. And I don't well, know. It was the the flubby ness right because when you yeah. when you use certain audio editing tools especially on acoustic guitars yeah. or any kind of polyphonic yeah. it's still, sustaining it's still in there thing too. i didn't even yeah that's yeah. it's slightly in there but it's definitely better it's than better. it was <laughs> but um i always love and i don't know i think that's they call that demoitis as we've talked about it oh yeah but i think demoitis is a good thing yeah i seriously do because mm-hmm. if something sounded good in the demo, don't touch it. Yeah. That's how my that's my mentality. If mm-hmm. it sounded good in the demo, do not touch it. Just like leave it alone. That's fair. All you should be doing is maybe brightening or darkening. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You know, maybe compressing. There's, there's certainly but some be careful sounds. with the compression too, you know, because that could fuck up the sound. There's there's definitely some sounds that I know we've been like, yeah, we should find a different 
sound for that. Oh yeah, but it's mainly like VSTs. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Cuz I remember mm-hmm. uh, we did that uh, like extensively in something better too. I'm pretty sure we like changed cuz well, you had like loops and shit in Mixcraft and I was like I don't know how you use this thing and I don't think you like knew how to like export those sounds or anything. So we like we're Mixcraft. like Mixcraft. We, Remember Mixcraft? Yeah, I do. I'm just yeah. trying to think about how those two things are correlated. I know I made the original demo for something better on Mixcraft. Yeah, and then we like listened to it. It's called then- Dream with lots of ease. And Remember, that was like the demo file. I can maybe play a little bit of it. That's Let's funny. see if I can find it. And um, yeah, we like went through each sound, and then yeah. in Pro Tools found like a similar or it's not better sound. That was what that's always what it is though, because you I don't know. I think maybe that's a problem too, to be quite honest. Because I feel like the sounds OG sounds are usually really well, good. I, and then we tinker. I think well, we're tinker we're tinker happy. We are well, tinker happy people. No, like, like I said, I mean that's that I feel like that's just we've learned that from just age. And yeah. Cause well, it's all fine and dandy. I'm not saying oh, it's like yeah. a bad thing. I just, I'm calling us out. I'm calling yeah. us out because I know, I know there are times oh, yeah. where we have tinkered for way too long and then oh, yeah. the original sound was always better. Mm-hmm. That's definitely, uh, oh. did you find it? I did, yeah. Hang on. I X'd it out on accident. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Keep talking. I have to refind it because I lost it. Oh no! I accidentally axed it out, but it's here. I know it's here. But yeah, there, there's a something better was definitely the most. Like we changed a lot of sounds from the demos. Yeah, and then on the mend was pretty much, yeah. Render, render what you got. If uh, you know, we we come, we we find that we need to change it. We'll change it later. Yeah. But for the most part, it was pretty much uh, what you hear is what you get kind of thing. Which exactly. was very refreshing because uh, going through multiple sound libraries for hours on end. Oh, did you find it? Yeah, I did. Hang on. Doom, 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 a- doom, doom. Yeah, that's it. I found it. <laughs> Here it is. Hang on. <laughs> wow. Be right back. Wow. Just stay put. Because I can put it like actually in the. It will be only mono. Just play it would it. just be mono? Just play it through the thing. I can add it. In post oh, there. that's not how it worked though. Because when I was on Patreon the other night and I had it plugged in, it was working just fine. So I don't know what we were doing. Who knows? But like, I had it on. Patreon. No, for this because we have this in mono right now. That's why. Okay, good yeah. call. Yeah. Okay, but and it's going you to should separate. be able to hear it just fine though. Like this is apparently something better. It's in a different key. So like all these were like loops before I play it. These yeah. are like loops from fucking. Uh, what's it called? Mixed craft. craft Thank yeah. you. Like loops that I would like tinker with and like change the key of and timing mm-hmm. and move notes around, but I came up with the. I know it sounds nothing like something better, but. the sound bed of the what we have way more drum beats different that's cool yeah it had like more of a dido yeah like a dido vibe and right here you'll be like be able to piece it together 
this desperation I fear There's nothing I can say Lower To win this fight Cause you hesitate much more than I could ever estimate And that's alright Cause I'm not insane You know I'm only a fool for you But I couldn't stay away Yeah, even if I wanted to So what am I supposed to do? You don't have to be the one to lose You don't have to be the one to lie You know, it's in there Yeah, that's cool Yeah, it's cool, right? That is cool It's It's funny how things come around Yeah, it's something but uh, geez, yeah, that we're close, coming up on five years since that we released that man. I know we're so fucking old. The hell, feels like it was almost yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Oh yeah, there's definitely more questions in here, by the way. Yeah, uh, did we answer all his? That was that was. I'm, a, I'm a go- yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I hope we answer all of them. Uh, 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 um, let's see. Oh yeah, that. So yeah. last one was the drum beats. So yeah, it really depends. The uh, yeah, it was, it, it's mainly uh, drum loops that we kind of either pro like either come up with a program, or it's it's actually very rare that I actually sit down to the kit and like come up with like something. Yeah, you know, it, it's I not feel that way about singing too. It's yeah. very rare that I'm sitting down with my guitar being like, ah, da, 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 da. yeah, you know, like singing. Yeah. It's mainly just me at my computer. Yeah, making it's fun. stuff, and then I and, add to and then you, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I am with 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 drumming, and then live, I'll like yeah, the millennial way of writing. Kind. We write like millennials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it, yeah, you answered it. Unless you had something else to add, I mean, I, mainly I just like feel it feels more creative for me because <laughs> as a drummer, I, you, it's very easy to fall into like habits, blast beats. <laughs> Uh, just the habit of playing like the same stuff over again when you program something it's a lot easier to be like do something that is possible but maybe you wouldn't normally do practical practically yeah. and then you're forced to learn it and then it in my opinion makes you a better uh musician that's true is when you're you're pushing your boundaries that makes sense cuz i remember there was a couple songs on this uh, record um, on this one on this upcoming yeah like don't hold your breath oh. that shit was a bitch for me to fucking learn oh yeah yeah. and yeah, yeah. i finally and got you're it the one who programmed that you're the one who like came up with that drum fill that part you came up with that oh that's on the fall no 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 you the the drum fill on the bridge of don't oh the, the you, triplet yeah yeah, yeah you, the triplet you, yeah I, I see i did that to myself yeah it was and you. i and i got it uh-huh. um but even like the the hi hat groove throughout like the uh, um, verses and stuff, I had to like rewire my brain to do that. And now that I can do it, I'm like, oh, this makes total sense. Yeah. But like, just like doing it and figuring it out is always like has been a challenge. But I I there has not been a song yet that we haven't like put out there that I'm like, oh shit, I can't play that. Yeah. I guess like the the one song that may trip me up sometimes. Don't hold your breath. Is uh, no, you're it's, not alone. No, not the one. Not the one. The drum fill into the last chorus. The blue blue Ah. Yeah, I guess that's that one. Which is funny because I actually because yeah. I actually played that. On the electric, on kit. the electric kit, and yeah. I wrote that on the electric. That's how kit. a lot of like drum parts on that album came yeah. to be. And, but like, and the, uh, there is, because if you come in just at the wrong time, or like if you get too excited or something, you'll throw everything off after it, and then yeah. and then you're fucked. And so, um, I remember when we were in Texas, actually, we did that live stream show from Orb that was on the set list. But I hadn't played that song. Like, if I don't practice that song, like most of the songs, for the most part, I could go weeks, months. Not the one wasn't on there. Oh yeah, it was. We played not the one at Orb. Well, I, I said 
skip it. Oh, Mid, I, I looked at you. and I was like, skip. I don't feel because uh, like we had, right. we had, I was like, we had Brian minute. watching, we had Paul watching. I was like, if I uh, fuck up that fill, it's gonna throw everything off, and I, I don't want that yeah, to happen. I was about to say, I didn't think we played that. Yeah, no, um, we replaced we didn't, it. Yes, with, and it was because I had, white lie. I didn't play that song in like, uh, God, it, it, it was like a fucking year. Yeah. And if it, that's one of those songs that if I don't like refresh my memory on, that I will fuck it up. And I remember we we tried before the the show started. We we tried running through it twice, and both times I fucked it up. And I was like, "Shit!" I man. remember. Okay. Yeah. That's so okay. when it came around, I was like, Austin, "Skip." You know what's funny about that? They probably would. Nobody would have noticed. That's so, so funny about that because stuff. it goes right into the downbeat, and I. If, if like like I said, if you're just a little bit off, yeah, okay, because yeah. it starts, it's it's just a weird, at least for me, because it it you're leading with I'm leading with my left. I always have led with my right, right, my hand down. right, right, right. But that fill, I'm forced to lead with my left hand, so it's like backwards for me. So sometimes it throws me off midway through, it's and then challenging I'm, your ambidexterity, and then I miss the downbeat. And which, you know, it's the fucking downbeat. Yeah, everyone notices. You gotta <laughs> you have the downbeat, bro. If if you're gonna fuck up anything, don't let it be the downbeat. <laughs> no. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah, you, you got all of them except that the very last one here says, uh, "Austin, when did you discover your voice?" Oh, this is well. My, I mean, my joke would be the day I was born. <laughs> uh, discover my voice? I have no idea. Well, this is so. This is kind of funny because you used to. I remember when we were recording something better. I remember pushing you a lot, and I was like, "Can you go higher? <laughs> Can you do that louder? Can you go higher?" Yeah, and and you're like, "Dude, I don't fucking know." I was like, "Just try it." You're like, "I don't know about that," and I was like, "Just just fucking try it." And so I think that might have led to because you used to do like the whole metal grungy. Yeah, I mean, I always wanted to sing, yeah, like uh, well, yeah, um, and I, uh, I don't know. I mean, actually, currently, right now, my voice is uh, giving me some problems, but yeah, um, which is the first time it's happened in like two years, so yeah. that's annoying. Uh, but it is what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I discovered my voice. Yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah, a little bit of that. But it's, I've I've always sang in the car, and I've always worked in my technique, and I've yeah. always tried to do things, and I've always tried to think outside the box and like ways that I don't know. To be honest with you, instruments just kind of come to me, yeah. And like the my vocals have always really just kind of came to me, yeah. I knew like when somebody tells me, "Oh, you have to sing from the belly." Or sing from the, you know, up here in your nose and you soft palate area. You got to sing from that. I know what they're saying immediately. Yeah. My brain knows how to click it into singing. Yeah. It just knew. I've, I don't know. Yeah. I've always just known how to, when it, when things are described to me, I can go, oh, you mean like this? What? And yeah. then they're like, yes, just like that. And yeah. I'm like, okay. So yeah. I, I don't know. It's always, it's always come very naturally to me. I've never really yeah. had. I, I've always said of, this. You are yes, one I, of the need, easier and, vocalists to work with for that reason. I it's, need more pushing, though. I do, like you said. To go back to your thing, I think I need more like... I'm a very play-it-safe singer. Yeah. I stick to my strengths. Yeah. And I stay away from the things that I... I stay away from the unknown. Yeah. Uh, and, and you did that a lot in Something Better. And I, yeah. I remember you would do a take and I'd be like, can you go higher? You're like, dude. You're like, you remember you would laugh. You're like, dude, no. I was like, what if you just tried it? I mean, you're in the fucking. If you don't like it, we'll delete it. But just fucking try it. Yeah, that's true. And you, I was certainly way more self conscious about my singing when you started. Yeah, and because, dude, I remember that. Like, there was a time that you couldn't even like sing. Blue October songs all the way through. No, you couldn't even hit. Now I can do that. Now you can hit pretty much everything. Pretty well, which is cool. It's cool. Been cool to see. At least, at least a week ago, I could. I don't know. My voice has been kind of fucked up for a week now. I don't know what the fuck. Probably just did this fucking cold weather. weather, Yeah, I don't know know? what the fuck I did. I don't know. So I mean, you haven't done anything right out though, because I just yeah. I don't know, man. 
because I, I think of myself as a pretty, you know, accomplished singer. Mm-hmm. So when I, when I'm like, you know, I'm like you on said, the frets, I'm always like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. seriously? Yeah. Like, well, like, what do like you, mean? you said, like you said, mm-hmm. you're not a robot. I know. Things happen. We're all humans. I want to be though. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I stopped chewing nicotine gum. Really? Yeah. I'm just on gum now. Really? Yeah. When's the last time you had nicotine? Two days ago. How mm. you feel? Horrible. Oh, horrible. <laughs> I want to kill you, Tyler. <laughs> you do. You do get fucking pushy. I I remember it. <laughs> no, I'm, my whole body's been very tense for two days. That's oh, probably no. why I was so grumpy yesterday when we were talking. Oh yeah. wow! That... Plus today I'm wearing the pajamas underneath the jeans because I'm cold. Yep. And I'm just like very irritable. Yeah. But like, you know, I'm all right. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, I found it, out that I found out that nicotine gum is not good for singing either. So uh, if you are a singer and you chew nicotine gum thinking you're ever going to have like a shred of happiness when it comes to <laughs> your addiction, think again, because nicotine gum is also bad for you. So well, get rid I of will that say, too. I will say. I only did it for a year. Yeah. Well, I will say. It's fine. I will say. Um, I can usually tell when you're weaning off and this is the first time that it, I, it's come to a surprise to me well, yeah, because usually, I have gum in my mouth because maybe but usually like your your attitude you you can just tell your attitude changes about a lot of things and yeah. I haven't noticed anything at least today it seemed fine mm-hmm. also I've only had a shred of caffeine wow. the best. I'm not saying like I oh, can't man, give me a fucking pat on the back here no I'm still uh, I'm still drinking tea and beer yeah. so yeah I, <laughs> I <laughs> Like I, I just, I'm just saying I haven't, the the tea I'm drinking is caffeine free, but mm-hmm. that's for my singing. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. What kind of tea is it? Um, it is. Do you know? Ginger root. All the stuff of your voice. Gotcha. Just voice shit. It's mm-hmm. ginger root. Is it good? Honey tea and very good actually. Well, that's good. If you put a fucking gallon of honey in it. It's delicious. <laughs> I don't put sugar in my tea, but yeah, I put honey in my tea. Gotcha. It's a uh, earth natural, oh, yeah, uh, sweetener, honey. Yeah, I call it. I call it bee juice. Bee juice. <laughs> 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 I just imagined uh, beetle juice for some reason. Going hey. bee juice. Yeah, that's funny. Mm. Mm. Cool. Anyway, nice. I think we answered all those questions, right? Uh, no, there's more. There's more? Oh yeah. my God. Howdy, Austin and Tyler. Just finished the pod. Jesus, I can't read. It's so small. I thoroughly enjoyed it and hope you keep it going. My question is two parts. Oh, okay. So this is a new question. This is a new question. Okay, gotcha. If you could have any guest on the podcast, one from the past, already deceased, and one that's still alive, mm. what would you have wanted to ask the guests with... Wait, the guest who is no longer with us. And for the guest that is alive, what is one step? Oh, my God. What is one step you can take towards having them come on? Okay. Holy. Wow. All right. So. Oh, boy. What is it? What is a question? Hang on a second here. Uh, One from the past, already deceased, and one that's still alive. Okay. I understand. A dead one and a live one. Yeah. And what's the question you would ask? The deceased. What's the question you'd ask the dead person? And how and can we get how the can we person? Get the person who's alive. Yes, I got it. Okay, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> Whenever you read something, you become like cross-eyed. Well, like, because, oh. <laughs> because like it's a different person explaining something. My brain yeah. cuts things differently, yeah. so I yeah. read it the way they cut it, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait, I gotta put it in my toaster first. Hang on, yeah. hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so who are the dead person that we? I already know mine. Yeah, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, or Prince. I I thought it would or have been Prince. Either way, Prince. Either way, what's Michael a question Jackson or Prince? What's a question you would have asked? Uh, Prince or Michael Jackson? We'll go with Prince. I know okay. I said Michael Jackson first, but I definitely listen to. I know way more Prince songs than I do mm-hmm. Michael Jackson. Um, question I would have asked Prince. Um, I would have asked Prince. I don't know. It's a good question here. I think I would just ask him, uh, what was your favorite fucking song to play live? 
Cool. What do you think that would be? If I were to guess. None of them. No, he wouldn't have one. He wouldn't have one. He wouldn't have one. No. He wouldn't. He'd be like all of them. That's what Prince would say. Yeah. Uh, no, he'd be like all of them. All of them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's so many questions. I'm like thinking about it and I'm like my brain's overloading. I don't know. What would I ask Prince? <sighs> Something that he could answer me. Uh, oh, I would ask him. What was your favorite musician to work with? There you go. He could answer that. He could answer that. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling he would answer that. He'd probably say Madonna or like Ani DeFranco or some shit. Yeah. I don't know what he would say. I don't know. Maybe Madonna. He'd probably say Madonna. I don't know who I would. I wonder if she's. I know that's tough, man. Yeah. Oh my god. There's too many dead people. <laughs> There's way too many. Oh god. Like all of them, right? Like you're with me, right? Like obviously I said Michael Jackson and Prince, but like Elvis, Chester Bennington, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> That's, Frank Sinatra. That, that would there be mine. Go. There you go. Frank What would I ask him? Oh man, so much dead air. I, I guess I would like to like if he was alive today, right? And he could see how the industry works today versus when it worked way back then. Mm. Like, what I would like to like get his perspective on what the differences are. Yeah, the, the, if if today is like. Because, I mean, back then, like, we're talking the beginning of the shit <laughs> of the industry, really. And, um, yeah, how it's evolved and, like, what is his, his or even, like, someone like Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash. Fuck, see, there's too many. Yeah. There's way too many. Also, like, just Kurt Cobain in general, you know, like, he seemed like, yeah, that would have been him or, like, Scott Whalen or there's too many, man. Yeah. There's way too many. I want to meet them all. I can't answer. I really can't. I know yeah. I said Prince. I'll stick with Prince. There sure. you go. Why not? Prince. There you go. I'll stick with Prince. But uh, a person who is currently alive. Who is someone? Yeah. I would say. Well, I know. <laughs> Snyder. 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 <laughs> Zack Snyder. Snyder. Yeah. Come on, dude. Zack Snyder. Well, and how can we get him on? Well, we did reach out to his publicist. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, he's very busy right now. As, you know, I'm he's sure. He's got Rebel Moon coming out. Which is fucking he's a busy awesome. fella. I'm, go I'm going to see that in, um, what's today? Well, I'm going on the 15th, mm -hmm. New York City. Oh, the day our song comes out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, next week. That's right. Damn, that's cool. Yeah. No, it's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm um, going with my dad. And, uh. Get to see it in IMAX. You cool. Always thinking about it. I should go. I uh, want to go with Tom. I know Tom's going to be up here at the end of the month. Oh, yeah. When's it going till? Doing it's it? only playing for a week. For a week? Well, he'll be up here at the end of that week. So, so it'll be, uh, it starts on Friday. I'm going to the Saturday one. And I think it ends on Thursday. Okay, he'll be up here. In the next week, so. And then it coming to Netflix, obviously. I'm sure we'll figure it out. So, mm. but uh, this is like the full, like, oh yeah, the full picture, yeah. the 70 millimeter IMAX, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> so, well, I have had to pee for 20 minutes. Pee break. So let's take it quick. We're always taking pee breaks on these podcasts. <laughs> well, I fucking drinking uh, drinks, drinking drinks. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> Fuck. Was that all you hoped? Bro, you ever pee so long where you're like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> I think, who is it? Adam Sandler has a joke about. Yes, about shitting. Wiping. About wiping. It's never ending wipe. He's like, after this one, I'm done after. <laughs> just, uh, just, just for principles. We're just going. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yeah. He's like, after this one, I'm done wiping just for the principle of it. Oh yeah. God. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> no. That's on Been his. Been uh, here for a fucking hour. <laughs> that's on his 100% fresh. Yeah, that one's a good one. Dude. I love that stand-up special. UFC ears. UFC ears. Horribly disfigured. UFC ears. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh, yes. Adam Sandler's one, another. It would be cool. It yeah. would be cool to interview. Yeah. I like him. Mm-hmm. Um, that's I think, right. I think he lives in New York City, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least he visits there often. He's an L.A. guy, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I sure. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure he's L.A. It's Jared Leto. Jared Leto's New York L.A. City. Jared Leto. Yeah. L.A. Really? L.A. Lost in the city of angels. He's Come probably on. all he he's ever probably do- got. Who are we kidding? He's probably got a house in everywhere. <laughs> all he ever <laughs> all does is cities. sing about fucking Los Angeles, bro. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I know he's always getting like. I like when he Caught says by the paparazzi. Of, and, that's a funny and, song and, when he says angels. Chills. <laughs> right? Like it was what was he doing? He was like, the city of angels. <laughs> like the way his voice like Yeah. You always talk about it. You always like how his voice goes. Yeah, he does there. he he does that. <laughs> like those breaks. Yeah, those weird like chills. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that it. shit he does. Chills. He's got a Yeah. He's got a, a trademark thing. His little, thing. like, moan yeah. at the end of his He's phrase. got a trademark thing, man. It's cool. Yeah. It's, it's, you know. I wonder if that was conscious. He was like, hey, guys, what if I just moan a little bit? <laughs> Everything I say. Well, I know he does it, like, a lot live. Yeah. More than, like, the records mm-hmm. and stuff. So maybe it's just, it's kind of like maybe, like, Nico's brother with his pitch on mind. You think I so? can't fucking stop yeah. That was so we have a, a good friend Nico. His brother plays guitar as well. <laughs> oh. And he's only He's playing. addicted to the pinch harmonic. He loves the pinch harmonic. He's like, I can't fucking what? stop. Yeah. What? He would like riff and like he would just automatically just at the end of it, every riff, he would do some pinch harmonic. <laughs> yeah. He was like, Fuck. Nico's like, Stop doing that. <laughs> Why are you doing that? There's too many. I can't stop. The one time you worked with with Anthony, yeah. like a fucking, <laughs> fucking eight year span. <laughs> He's a good dude though, but he was like, "How are you doing all that?" Because he was, I was like programming drums. He's like, "You're so quick at that. How are you doing that?" I was like, "I don't know. You just it's double not, click. It's not very difficult, Anthony." Yeah, it's just. I mean, like, when I, you when you do it for so long, it's it just becomes. Yeah. I miss Tony. He's funny. Yeah, he's he a funny a, guy. He's a fun guy. But uh, last time I saw him was at Garrett's. Oh yeah, Garrett. Yeah. yeah, a little party there. Yeah. Yep. I meant to go the other night, but I'm so overwhelmed with yeah. the shoot. <laughs> I feel you. I was like, I'm ready for bed. Good night. I feel you. <laughs> nobody nobody blames you. Yeah. I shouldn't have ate that banana. You mean like a banana just like lingers around? I feel like way longer than it should. Dusty trying to tell you. <sighs> Man. Dusty was like fucking banana. Yeah. Yeah. I was I up? Uh, I was gonna say something outside, I thought about it. Hmm. That was I thinking. Shit. Shit. What were I thinking about? Oh yeah. Um. So, uh, movies, right? Oh yeah, we were talking about Rebel Moon. We we're talking about movie. I watched a movie last night. So Sarah and I have been doing this thing where we watch, like I said in the last podcast, we're watching like all the foreign movies. Is this going to be a new thing? Yes. That every every episode, we're going to have a new movie yeah, recommendation new mo- from yeah, Austin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you got you want a fucking weekly we, movie recommendation from Austin Kranich? Then I got you. We need some like little animation to pop in that says Austin's movie review. I like that. <laughs> Please do it. I'll and just do, use that and that clip. Yes. That clip. Austin's movie review. That's great. Boom, uh, but boom. yes, I do have a movie review. Um. But I want to start by saying that everyone should do themselves a favor, and we we're starting this new um, uh, what do you call it? a journey of watching? Well, we look up movies that have been remade in the U.S. Oh, and then we re- watch the original. Cool. So we just rewatched, rewatched. We watched the original version of uh, "Let Me In," which is not called "Let Me In." The original is called Let the Right Ones In or Let the Right One In. It's either one or ones. Gotcha. I'm not going to say anything about the movie, but it's fucking awesome. What kind of genre? Thriller? Horror? Horror. Everything I watch is horror. 
It's okay, thriller. psycho. It's thriller, <laughs> horror. Just so you know, on my if my weekly movie review, weekly movie reviews with Austin. Yeah, so boom, it's boom. never not going to be a horror or a thriller movie. It's always going to be horror or thriller. It's, cool. it's not going to be no. Well, a couple people watched. Um, I saw in the comments they watched. Uh, yeah, they watched. The Ghostland. Ghostland, yes. Yeah, they liked it. Yeah. See, I was trying to find it on, on the thing, and it's just called Ghostland. Incident in the Ghostland is what it's called. Yeah, but it, on the title on like the yeah. screen, it's just Ghostland. I don't know why. I was like, is that the right one? And then we looked it up online. and it was Well, I think one. because... I, mean, I didn't watch it I yet, think but. because Ghostland is what they called it in America. Interesting. Because it's obviously... It's not a remake, but it's, yeah. it's a French film. But yeah, when we looked it up online, yeah. it was like, oh yeah, that that is. Yeah, true. I think when they marketed it here, they just marketed it as Ghostland because we're more stupid. We can't think of the perhaps. Big... <laughs> I don't know. We but... click with the one, <laughs> the one title. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> one word title. I did just call it Ghostland. I didn't call it Incident in Ghostland when we no. when you first brought it up. So Incident in a Ghostland is way cooler than just Ghostland. I agree. I agree. Incident in Ghostland, and it's fucking incredible. So yeah, for those of you who have watched it. Don't spoil anything for the people in the comments. That would be a really cool death metal band band name. Incident in a Ghostland? Yeah. It's way long. It's awesome. Exhausting. Imagine it in the, in the crazy font and everything. Yeah. I mean, there's so many death. Slaughter to prevail. Thy art is murder. Nah. I uh, think band, band names are all stupid, including ours. What is... <laughs> Dude, that's... They're fun. all stupid. That is a funny story. Oh, that is another... Didn't band names are the worst part of being in a band. Didn't we get that question? Where did the band name come from? Yeah, we did. So it, it was literally just a fucking thought that I had. That was it. And then once we like made the EP, we sat up all night, mm. literally all night. Six a.m. Sun, you came over late. Like you left. I was late at, at I left work, went to my dad's on Saratoga Lake, <laughs> where you guys lived at the time. <laughs> and, and I was on came. the other side of the lake. And then you called me over. You were like, "Dude, come over." And I was you like, were like, can okay. I just come over? Because yeah, like, we were yeah. talking about the band name on the text. And then he was like, you want me to just yeah, I was over? like, you want me to just come over? So I came over and then we <laughs> sat in your kitchen eating food. Something, yeah. Uh, until 6 a.m. Yeah. And my your dad, dad came yeah. down and he was like, the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> you two really? idiots still doing away. <laughs> trying, trying to figure trying out to our band name. <laughs> and then he started coming up with the stupidest names. Mm. <laughs> well, your dad was coming up with some? Yeah. I don't remember that. He just comes up with some ridiculous band names. Mm. <laughs> but, my dad's I, I can't even. high school band name was going to be Joint Compound. I always thought that was good. Oh my God. I think Joint Compound is a good title. Don't steal <laughs> it. Don't steal it. It's trademarked. I promise. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take that. I doubt that because we're, our band name is still in the process of that. And it's been like almost two years. <laughs> Hey man, it's a, it takes a long time. Uh, it's in the process. So. I think it's pretty much done. Yeah, it's there. pretty much. I there. think our logo is the last one. Our logo is the last part because it's too close to Times New Roman. Oh, that's why they're having a tough time with that part. But no, the band name is trademarked. Yeah. I mean, we. I think it did go. Yeah, through. we are actually very recently, but yeah, still, no, it no. took like the band two name, years. Yeah, we're trademarked. We are the Broken View. You can't like be a band called it's the Broken crazy. View now. Crazy. So. We're the broken view, but the title is the title is not the the logo. So yeah, yeah. the logo is Times New Roman. So obviously they're like, you can't trademark Times New Roman. <laughs> well, the that one, the one that's on the screen right now, that one's not Times New Roman. Yeah, but we talked to the manager, not manager, our lawyer. He says it's too close. Yeah, he's it's like, too is close. That Times New Roman? Yeah, it's too close. Even if even though it's not, like he said, he could, but yeah. It's like it's too close. not. He's like you'll probably just waste a bunch of money. Cause yeah, it's not. You can't trademark a font. Yeah, you can't. So if it was like something like the Rolling Stones logo, like with the the lips and the tongue and shit. See, Metallica has it fucking fucking solid, man. They got the they got the M. And yeah, yeah. That's like a straight up font that they got made. Yeah. So something like that. Yeah. Obviously, trademark away. But oh, yeah. But yeah, the. Uh, our logo, you know, we like the we like the timeless thing. It's always fun. What if we did the broken view for our podcast from now on? We should get the Metallica font from the font, <laughs> and then just do like 
You know, like the big old point. Oh my god. The broken. <laughs> that one, oh, the W would be fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like? It is a font on Defont, and uh, every letter has a version. So I have no idea. Let's see. What does a W look like? I'm curious. I have, it probably. What does a Metallica W look like? It probably wouldn't be like that. You think? Who knows? I'm sure it can only be like M's and no. Maybe M's. every letter has it on that font. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I'm curious. Yeah. So. Okay. So the W looks like this. <laughs> That's what the W looks like. It looks. Like. That looks stupid i don't know if you can see it no. it does look so stupid we are not doing it that like. <laughs> it's like a shoe it does <laughs> it looks like a fucking stiletto <laughs> yeah it does and it would just flip it if it was the last letter screenshot that we'll throw that on the screen oh god Jeez. oh my god dude that looks horrible it don't look great Oh God! It looks a little wonk. Yeah, stick with the M's and the A's, Metallica. Don't don't put any W's in there. Well, that they, looks rough. Well, they didn't make this font. This is like a fan-made font. Yeah. Crazy. the The lowercase is all look cool. When did they come up with like the the logo? Do you know? I don't know. I know that. What do I do? I do know something about that first logo. Uh, it's always been there. Yeah. So on Kill 'Em All, you have the the pointy letters that, that yeah. has been there since day one. Yeah, but like, where did it, where did the um, idea come from? Did they draw it themselves? If I remember, yeah, it's a drawing. Yeah, yeah, it was a that's, drawing. That's cool. That is cool. I like that. Remember correctly, it might have been a drawing, like on a because nowadays like a napkin did, or something. That's crazy. Because, like, like nowadays... Or something. I might be wrong, but... Nowadays, like, you can go on a computer and just try a bunch of shit mm. until something looks cool to you and then, like, modify it from there. But, like, yeah. back then, if you had... You just had to draw something, you know? Yeah, cool. honestly. That is cool. Um, Yeah. What, what... Did we answer that question? What was the question? Um... Uh... Oh, I think James Hetfield came up with the logo himself, actually. Well, that's cool. Anyway. He would be cool to have on. James Hetfield? <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> he's, he's, he's a cool dude. I love him. He's a cool dude. Mm. I like seeing all those videos of them playing um, in like the, the big arenas, and he's on the side of the stage smoking a cigar. Yeah, he he's a cool <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and he's, like, he's a cool motherfucker. Puffing away. Um... We answered that pretty well, I think. Can't wait to hear your answer and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Yeah. Hope you had a good one. Uh Melbourne, Australia, guys, you need to visit us down under. That's not a question. Down under. But, yes. But yes, you gotta we do. say it. You gotta say it like Down, down Under. Down under. Yeah, Melbourne, Australia. We you guys got to visit us down under. Yeah. <laughs> How good is my accent? Is it bad? Uh, probably. Hey, I was uh, looking forward to seeing you at Red Rocks in Denver. Too bad my family lives in Boston Spa, so we come to oh, wait, visit. What? <sighs> what? Hey, I was looking forward to seeing you at Red Rocks in Denver. Too bad my family lives in Boston Spa, so we come to visit often. Will you be in Albany August 17th through the 24th? Um, we were playing a show at Red Rocks. <laughs> I don't think we were playing a show at Red Rocks. <laughs> no, we def we played a show in Boston Spa. Yeah, but if your family's from Boston Spa, then you got a pretty good chance of seeing us. Yeah, I uh, mean we live up here, so Albany on August seventeenth, twenty fourth. I don't think we have anything set yet. No, that's that's a little ways out, but yeah, we're uh, we're, we're always on stuff. we're always actively looking. Mm -hmm. you know, we'll be touring in the spring though. Yeah, our agents on it, so I'm, I'm sure like we'll for sure yeah. get some kind of yeah. offer around that time. Yeah, we will be touring in the spring for sure, though. Yep. Uh, any thoughts on coming to the UK to do a few dates? Would be awesome to see you live. Yes. Well, fucking hell yeah, we love. We have a good friend Adam over there. We do who visited us. Mm -hmm. I wish we had this podcast going when he was here. I would have loved to. I love talking to Adam. Mm -hmm. He's so cool. 
Adam's a good dude. Yes. Uh, Rick Rubin or Don Gilmore would be a great producer for TBV, especially mm-hmm. Rick Rubin. He has worked with Linkin Park, Metallica, so many bands and musicians. Mm-hmm. Austin, is there any possible way? Wait, any any way possible I could get a lyric sheet for another white lie? I'll pay you for it. I wanted to put it on a frame and hang it on my wall. Okay. That's actually part of That's the, actually, uh, yeah. the membership. The um Yeah, I actually just I just uh finished the lyric sheets for our memberships on the Master Fan yeah. tier. Um so that's the f- the fifty dollar one, right? Yeah. So yeah. this month is all I feel is you. Yeah. So I'm sending that out. Cool. Um Yeah, and then uh just reach out to us on Discord and mm-hmm. Uh, but also, but also, yeah. Um, another white lie. I'll just do another white lie next month or something like that. Yeah, we'll do it like that. Join, join the community. We uh, yeah, join know, the community. We we, we do uh, you know, we actually interact with you like this on yeah. We try weekly to live. It's been a little, you know, it's been a little soft. I do the we do the weekly live streams every week, but like yeah. it's been a little a little dry. Not like nothing. There's been stuff on there, but like yeah. we're making a music video right now. Yeah. So you'll you'll get access to that music video early. You'll you'll oh, yeah. get behind the scenes scenes footage oh, uh, from stuff. us making us the making the record. You get to uh join in on our weekly live stream uh practices. So mm-hmm. you get to basically get to see a show every week. And uh both acoustically yeah. and uh full band. We haven't done acoustic in a while, but we do do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and get to hang out with us. Yeah. And then, yeah, be a part of the Discord community, which is growing and oh, it's yeah. been, been fun. So I'm that's, not, where, that's where we get a lot of the questions, by the way, too, in the yeah. Discord. So I'm not familiar with Don Gilmore, but I'm familiar with Rick Rubin. Yeah. I th- I like I like Rick Rubin. I like, um, his, I like his mentality on things yeah i'd rather work with um uh tim palmer yeah. or um you know uh <laughs> I, so many producers i don't fucking know um i'd like to work with tim palmer i would I'd also like to work with matt Nevesky again um yeah that was such a good time I would like to work with um, Justin Furstenfeld. I think he'd be a good producer for us. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rick Rubin would be cool. I think, you know, as funny as it is, my buddy is always like, not like bad talking the production, but like he's always like, I don't know, man. I don't like the way this sounds or that sounds. He's just like not totally into it. But it'd be cool to have an album produced with Kevin Shirko. I think that'd be kind of cool because he did "Hit Me, Baby" one more time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. How sick would that be? Yeah. To work with Kevin Shirko, that'd be sick. Yeah. I know you said you wanted to work with the guy from Ocean's Eight, Alaska. The drummer doesn't he produce? I don't know if he produces for other bands, no. No. I, I think you're thinking of Andrew Wade. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah. Andrew Wade, he he's he's down in Florida. He's a good producer. Yeah. Um he does a lot of like the heavier stuff and pop punk stuff, but now he's been like delving into the pop scene. Yeah. And it, he's been doing some really cool stuff. So that's pretty sick. I like uh he he's very versatile. Yeah. That's what I like. And knows his shit. So yeah, I I almost because he does interns and I almost before the band and, and everything I I was trying to get in there, but it's it's a very competitive space as you can imagine. I'm trying to get it. There's one spot like every eight months that opens up, and he just posts on Facebook. And if you you if you don't comment, he won't know, and he'll just message you at some point and be like, "All right, come down. You gotta be local though." So I almost I almost did that. Interesting. After school and uh um but yeah, no the, the band thing was going on and I interned with, with John Felino instead and Yeah. That's here we are. Sick. Pretty cool. Also Will Putney would be cool. Will Putney, yeah. He does a lot of the heavier stuff too. Yeah. 
I, I would I, like to, you know. I've never. It'd heard. be cool. Also, Bob Rock. It'd be sick. To, <laughs> yeah. It'd be so sick to work with Bob Rock. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. There's. There's. Uh, what was that? There's another one that we almost worked with. Um, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, but, but, but he's out in California. Oh right. Um, Had he did. Um, eight, welcome to the Black Parade. Yeah. What the fuck? Why am I? Why am I blanking? Oh, look it up. I ben can't. Ben Benson something. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. Um. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> wow, I feel like a dick. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's like, How, Howard Benson. Howard Benson. That is his name. I was going to say Richard Benson, Richard Benson, Richard, Richard, Richard Benson, Benson, Richard Benson, but no, it's Howard Benson. <laughs> Howard yeah. Benson, yeah. No, he, he, he's another one of those producers that's, that's um, yeah, very, popular as fuck. He's very expensive. popular, yeah. Well, I think he, I think now he, he does, I don't think he takes up front, I think he does um, back end stuff. That's probably I smarter. I think that's what he yeah. does. I think that's more appealing anyway. I think. And um, at least, I, I don't want to speak for him, so maybe he does that. But mm. when when we were in talks with him um, before we decided to work with Matt. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of chit-chat, at least, that we were getting Yeah. in return. But no, he, he would be fun to work with I, I again like it's mainly like it's not necessarily like their production like how things sound because that that's really ultimately up to the mix engineers and the engineers themselves it's more so a mentality going into recording yeah and pulling out the best possible thing from the artist that you can that's mainly what i look for in producer because it's you're trying to especially with <clears throat> like vocal production specifically is you're trying to pull a moment from an artist there's a like like matt said like i really liked when matt was like there's a difference when a singer is just singing the song and when the singer is feeling the song yeah that's why he said to me he was like i don't give a fuck about pitch just yeah. give me character. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, no pressure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no pressure, man. That's exactly how it went to. He was like, I'm not. He's like, I just want to give you a quick little pep talk. I'm not looking for pitch. <laughs> I, I just want Matt. character. I love Matt. So. And I was like, yeah. okay. Pressure's on now. So baby. I went for it. Yeah. And we got some really great stuff. And I, I it's mainly like that mentality of... Above anything else, because like I said, you can you can change tones, you can change um, a lot of things about how a sound, like a a, a sound sounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, there's not really, especially nowadays, like there's not really uh, any real limitations to what you can do with no, no, an no, audio no. file. But what you can't change is the character of it. And, For sure, yeah, yeah. And extracting that. And that getting the artists in a right mindset to be able to pull that off and feel confident about it is um, I have I what I look for. In a I feel like that is up to the artist, though. I don't really think the producer has any impact on how the artist feels about the material, to be honest with you. Well, not the material, but... Um, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong or maybe other musicians have felt differently, but... I find it hard to believe that any producer could look at me and make me feel something about my the mm -hmm. stuff I wrote. You know what I'm saying? That's probably up to you. You know. Well, it's it's, it's, it's tapping up to you in, to. It, well, I think it's into. it's almost like they're almost like not like a therapist that's trying to like put you back in that moment. Oh but God! Like, but like I wouldn't want to work with that producer. They're like they're trying to tap into that those feelings that you had when writing that song. Nah, that just grosses know? me out. I don't know. I wouldn't want a producer to even try to do that. Really? No. I'd want a producer to be like, hey man, do what comes up. Yeah? Yeah. Because like, as a singer, I would not want a producer to do anything other than be like, okay, here's your time to do your thing. Yeah. That's it. You don't do that to the fucking drummer. 
You don't yeah. do that to the bass player. Yeah. You don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I know there's different instruments, but like, I would feel a little weird if my 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 uh, producer was like, "Hey, man." I think about what it was like when you wrote this song. I'd be like, "Get out of here!" Well, I don't <laughs> I'd think be like, "Get out of my booth." <laughs> well, I don't think you know. It's, I don't weird. think it's necessarily that. I think it's more so like, yeah. "What is like? What are you trying to get across here?" Well, yeah, it's in the it's lyrics. That kind of thing. It's in the lyrics, right? And and I think like yeah. it's like Tyler Bates and Marilyn Manson. You know, when yeah. they made the Pale Emperor, dude, it's the most you can ever feel from Marilyn Manson as a singer. Yeah. There is not a record out there other than the Pale Emperor and Heaven Upside Down where you feel Manson's words as much yeah. as you do in those records because yeah. he was sitting there with his producer, but his producer's energy and his talent was enough to, because they just sat there, right? He talks about it all the time. There's no vocal booth because mm-hmm. Tyler Bates didn't give a fuck he was like no vocal booth I don't give a shit about acoustics just sing into the microphone yeah. it's a rock album I don't care just yeah. sing into the mic he set him up a mic he played his guitar with the amp bleeding right into the microphone he didn't give a shit Yeah. and there was never like a, oh we gotta redo it no it was just whatever came out no. into that microphone once they locked down on lyrics and melodies they just played together Yeah. they played the whole song on guitar and sang it all in one take. And then mm-hmm. they added the drums, the keys, and the synth, and the layers afterwards. That's cool. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what a good producer does. Yeah. Let you, as the singer, produce what you need to feel. There's no way a producer, and I'm just saying this out of my own, like, my own ass, but there's no fucking way, until I'm proven wrong, that a producer is going to be able to look at me and make me tap into my old feelings with my song that I used to feel. There's no way it's ever going to happen. Yeah. Ever. I'm not going to say never, but uh, doubt it. Doubt it. Yeah. Because I'd be like turned off if my producer was like, you got to get into touch with what you felt when you wrote the song. I don't, I, I'd I don't, be like, I, go away. I don't think it's that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what I mean? I'd be I, like, leave me alone. Well, that's not, that's not what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. here at all. It's not like, oh, like uh, in that sense, it's more like what, I guess the best way I can say it is what is the, what are you trying to convey here? Yeah. Mm. And like, because yeah. you can tell. You can tell when you're just singing a song. Well, you can. Yeah, Ver- I, g- I guess you can. And like, the perfect example is, again, like, well, well, your demo takes versus recutting it. You can tell that you're, there's like, you're just not. See, as- for me, it's not the character, though. See, I think that's like the disconnect between the singer. Yeah. And the listener. Yeah. For me, I'm not listening for character. I'm listening yeah. for tone, yeah. pitch. Yeah. Uh mainly tone. Yeah. Mainly tone. I'm not listening for character at Cause all. There, Cause there's some That's things... what I like about the demo is the character. Because I if you really want the truth, I could have gave you way more character on Start Over. Yeah. And I give way more character when I sing Start Over live every time. Yeah. Yeah. The album, in my opinion, is a bit a bit like a little more monotone. The yeah. way I sang it, yeah. a little more like robotic. Yeah, but like, I liked it better yeah. because the tone was better. Interesting. So I'm not looking for character. Yeah. It's just interesting. The difference between a producer and a singer and a drummer or producer and a bass player and a producer. I don't know. It's a weird thing because I don't think I look for the same things that producers look for. I look for because as like a general, yeah. um, like perfect example is on Blue October's latest record yeah. uh, Better Man that yeah. his voice like the way it breaks up yeah when it does I don't know what the fuck he was doing that day um but like it really like it, it cuts through just even just like a little bit of yeah y- you know what I'm saying like yeah the, I guess when, I've only listened to that song once but but like you, you feel what he's singing, yes. Be just because of that small little imperfection of, and it happens only like a couple times throughout the song. But yeah, just, um, but that's what we talked about last week. Well, not last week, the week before last with Matt on yeah. approaching normal. So a lot of like, there's a lot of like imperfect moments. Yeah, like that, and but and, yeah, it, and it like 
That's like a Justin Furstenfeld staple, though. Yeah, and it makes you... And that's probably why, like, Jared Leto's, when it's done tastefully, his yeah. little things, his little vocal moans. <laughs> his little, yeah, his little his moan. Little, his, little, his little thing. Matt said nobody gives a fuck about a, a perfect vocal. So. Yeah, mm. and... It, it it definitely does even subconsciously play a, a big role into the all, overall feeling of the song. Yeah, which is is really, I think what what Matt has really yeah been was trying to extract. I feel that you know, there's just a weird thing about producers though. There is a weird thing. Like, I love what Matt did as far as helping with the structure of yeah. the song yeah. and the bass. That was big. Like, like, I love everything that he brought forth, yeah. but what I take away is that stuff. I don't really take away the mentality or anything I was in or, like, you know, the state of mind that he, he didn't really do any of that stuff. He, and he didn't need to. And that's what I love about... Well, he made our time there, for me at least, feel comfortable. Yeah. That was like the biggest yeah. takeaway, is that it was comfortable. Because sure. he's didn't, just like a chill guy. It, it didn't feel like... Because a lot of the times, going into like big studios like that, it's scary. Because like, especially for us, because we've only ever <clears> produced <throat> music in our fucking bedroom. Oh, Yeah. And so, like, like recording in a vocal and going into like, yeah, like a in like a big thing with a bunch of people you don't know around, meeting people, yeah, and then just like, all right, here we go, we got two weeks, let's get it done. It's intimidating, yeah. And you know, I remember going there the first day and getting the tour and um, meeting everybody. It was it was a little like, okay, here we are. We didn't see Matt yet. We didn't see him till uh, Monday. But the moment, you know, after that first day, we're like, oh, shit. Okay, we're good. Yeah, it's fine. It's like whatever. Like the first day was like pretty much like a little bit of setup. I think we did a couple drum takes and and I don't know, man. And just got to like really like know each other and know the space. And, you know, we had lunch together and talked about shenanigans. And and it it was like moments like that, that it it was like, okay, this is making the, the artist feel comfortable is definitely yeah. a big part of what I look for. Yeah. Because for I don't sure. want I don't want to go in there and be like judged and like Sure, I don't know. Oh, why. you're fucking you're fucking this up. Do a better I mean <laughs> and there's definitely producers yeah. like like Matt was saying in the in the his podcast was like there's the producer that will be like, no, this is wrong. Oh yeah. This is wrong. Yeah. Because, like, there really isn't, like, a right and wrong in this no. thing. There's just opinions. To be quite frank, I don't think there is a single thing in the entire world that could have made me feel uncomfortable in that situation. Yeah. I, you know, I remember talking to my dad when we were in Texas, just saying, if nothing ever comes from this experience, yeah, you know, after it, as far as my career or my band or my life in general yeah. goes... I'm totally fine with that because when I was a kid, you know, I would email Ryan De La Jose and and (laughs) Justin Fersenfeld and, you know, inquire about the studio and working there and always seemed like such like a thing that would never happen. Yeah. You know, and the fact that I was actually doing those things you know, to me is, uh, it's fucking incredible. I mean, like, that's just, I don't, yeah. I don't really care about much else to be honest with you. Yeah. And if I'm being totally honest, you know, like if people are like, Oh, what's like your biggest accomplishment. I would still, yeah. 10 years from now, I'll say that. Yeah. I'll say working on that album because that was the first time where I actually felt like, a part of the world of the people who made me want to do music. It was the first yeah. time that I actually felt like I was not just a kid looking up. It was that we were peers. We were colleagues, colleagues. We were working together. Yeah. I'll always say, you know, that's the moment that matters the most. Yeah. That always matters to me, you know? Mm-hmm. But I mean, 
that's why I think producing is such a weird art. Maybe a little overrated, if you want my opinion. Yeah. I think producing is a little, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Just, you know, don't think of, don't think it over. I mean, like, don't overthink it, you know, just yeah. tell your musicians to make a good album. I mean, like, yeah, we're making a good album, guys, you know? Yeah. You, it's it's the confidence. Aspect. You have the music. Yeah. You brought it to me, so you're the ones who came here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you are the ones who came to my studio, so you you make the album. Yeah, like you make the album. I'll tell you my opinion, and you can listen I've, to me or not. But yeah, I've because I've heard some horror stories about um, producers, producers being like control freaks about it. Uh, yeah, and like getting in that attitude of like. Oh, this has got to be the fucking best thing and the best fucking day. You're not getting it. And like kind of being like hostile about it yeah. a little bit. And it's like, just make them feel comfortable. Yeah, dude. Like, what? You know, <laughs> make them definitely like you being comfortable is going to let them be give like that's going to do more. I feel especially for singers, even just like working with you. Yeah. If you're not comfortable, you're like. You're out of your element, so you're you're not, and you can hear it. Even you can, even yes. And you're like, this isn't it. right. I can feel it in my yeah. throat. Yeah, and you're like, this isn't right. Even if it's like, I'm like, oh, dude, this is this is great in the moment. You're like, no, this, this isn't good. I'm, I'm not comfortable. And um, yeah, it, it, once you, I like to do finally, vocals by myself. To be quite honest, yeah. Well, I remember on on the men, you kind of own that, and we set you up a little. Yeah, Dolly, and I'm a little better now, but yeah, <clears throat> I take I, you know, technically hate doing vocals anywhere that yeah. isn't just on my own time. Yeah, well, because yeah. I imagine that it is hard to just get right into it. To be honest, the best I sound is like I don't know if it's just me, but I, I, the best time to do vocals is when you've gotten up, had some coffee, chillax, yeah, have some lunch, yeah. Do vocals then. Yeah. When you're like chilling and you're like, when you're not thinking about singing, you always sound best. Yeah. So like, well, that's, that's why I think the demo takes always sound better because yeah. you're like, oh, you were just putting it down because the vocal has, the song has no vocal. Right. So you're like, I need to put a vocal here. There's no vocal yeah. in the song. But it ends up being really fucking good. Right. <laughs> and you're like, and, and, oh, And okay. that's, and going like, that's exactly what I'm, saying yeah. as far as making you, uh, the artist feel as, like comfortable like they're not yeah there's no pressure on it you're just a, you're all just hanging out making music yeah whatever happens yes happens. you're right you know you're right so i'm not a fan of studios i think studios are a little scary studio, they are yeah i don't like they them very are. much but i liked working at or vocals yeah. were not fun for me i struggled yeah. with that i yeah. the comfortability like you said yeah it is hard, it, and especially having multiple people that, you know, you haven't worked with. Yeah. I, I imagine that that's tough. Because even when I was drumming, like, the first day, it was, it was tough. You know, I would feel really good about something, and then it would be like, well, it wasn't quite quite there. And I was like, okay, here, all right, yeah, here yeah, we yeah. go, you know, you know. Or try this. Try That was the biggest thing is, um, what if you, is like, I had, like, a, a an idea of what I was like, I, I brought an idea to the studio, yeah, and then we we laid it down, and it just for whatever reason might have not been the right move, and then on the spot having to like rework it and then laying it down. Oh yeah, that w- that was a little scary for me because I was like, oh I, you know I. This is this is like the recording. This is it. It's not, dude. I'm right there with it's, you. It's not a time for. Uh, you I'm know, right there with you. Fucking around. You sound the fucking morning, dude. Kelsey was like, you know, she does a good fucking job. By the way, Kelsey. Kelsey's great. a very good producer. Um, great vocalist. Yes, yeah, she is. She, she's wonderful. Yeah. But Kelsey was like, hmm, take the vocal and maybe do like a little bit like this. It's so unlike me to stay. And I was like, huh. Yeah, and in the moment I was like, "Wait, I then, can't do that." And then you have to like, I can't re- do that. Rework it, all. and it's yeah. so stupid because you know now I listen to it. It's so unlike me to stay. 
Yeah. I can do it like nothing. Yeah. But in that moment, because the original was, it's so unlike me to stay. Yeah, yeah. But that's the OG, right? Yeah, but yeah. she was like, it's so unlike me to stay. And yeah. now that feels more natural than maybe as I'm used to it. But yeah, I was like, moment, what is the original? I, I know. I, I almost, yeah, okay. But, oh, God. I was like, I couldn't do it. I was like, oh, my God. I could not fucking wrap my head around it. So yeah. I imagine it's the same thing with you with the drums. So, yeah. Because like, you, no, you, I'm used to this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Demoitis. Then, yeah, that demoitis again. Yeah. And it's hard to get out of that and think of a a song or a melody differently or a rhythm like slightly differently because you 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 just fall into the yeah. like a habit almost yeah. so you do. crazy what else we got oh yeah shit man i don't know oh yeah no that, that was a good time yeah. i do i do want my own studio but i don't think that big no, no, a little smaller, a little, little tiny guy. Well, I like the smaller space. I just want somewhere to <clears throat> base. Like it would be cool to have a a space that's like the size of your room, plus out here. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good size. It's a good size. I agree. Have a, like a live room out here, and then that's like the control room. Yeah, have like a vocal booth in there. Oh god, I'm sorry. Even even big enough to like do like little drum stuff in there. For sure, to. yeah. It kind of is already. That's it's, it's perfect. Um, I hope you guys had a great holiday. Austin, where did another white lie come from? And you guys said that the that you would take suggestions for an acoustic tour, Anderson, Indiana, at the Paramount Theater. Paramount Theater is a little big. Someday. Right? Isn't, Someday. Isn't that kind of big? It sounds big. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> uh would be perfect for a few hundred people. Oh, is it just okay. a few hundred? All right. Maybe I'm wrong. Am yeah. I might maybe the Paramount Paramount Theater there is different than the Paramount Theater here. Because I know the Paramount Theater here is big. Yeah. yeah. Um but uh he's asking me where another white lie came from. Uh huh. It's an interesting one. Um, so another white lie was a song that I wrote. Um, in the in the uh, the bus or what is it called there? Camper. So I, I had oh, my camper yeah. set up. Yeah, I had my camper set up at my mom's house, so I didn't wake anybody up. So I would like bring all my gear out there, and I would work in the camper and. Uh, I was working on a bunch of tunes and I had some loops going and I was on Splice and all these websites and just finding some cool ideas, something to inspire me a little bit to come up with some stuff. Didn't you pull your inspiration for the lyrics from the situation that I was going through at that time? Uh, No. Do I remember that? Not with Another White Lie. That was you and me now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you and me now. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But no, Another White Lie was... Um, I forget. Yeah, because that started as just the the first verse and the yeah. chorus. So we I had the, I had the whole shebang, like demo. Yeah, like these cool drums, which I think the drum tone in the demo was cooler. But, um, we did end up putting it on the record. Yeah, because it's a. Strong, that almost got cut. Which it did. Is, I think it's so funny because we almost cut it. Yeah, and it's like a popular, and the, popular track too. Until I. Put the chorus on the bass. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, okay that that's that's the that's the sound that I was missing." Yeah, because it felt so like things felt pokey about that song. Yeah, that I didn't like. And uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about that. The demo had like a thing about it yeah. that was hard to translate to the recording, and I don't know why. I think it was just the yeah. tone of the drums, to be quite honest. Yeah, maybe I um, I I. I like the thinner drums, the thinner, more like incubus style drums work better for that track, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That which you know. is another thing another reason why I would love to have like a drum studio to do that stuff. Yeah. With you know. Cause um you know, programming is all great and all. And I I used to stand behind it firmly. Um like 
which I still do. Like, if that's in your, like all you can afford to do, fucking do it, and don't be ashamed of it. If it if it sounds, if that's like what you're looking for, and that's it sounds better than what you can achieve with real drums, fucking do it. Just do it. Make yeah. music. at the end of the day, make music. No one gives a fuck what you record yeah, your drums no with and matter. how. Half of the hip hop pop songs are all fake drums too. So yeah it's all it, good if and um but like we had we were had the opportunity to finally do it in, in, a, in a real space and real studio and really dial it in and i i wish i had that ability um to do that more yeah like just on my free time yeah. like how like a guitar player anywhere can pick yeah. up their guitar I don't really have that luxury no, in, that's an, true. in an apartment right that's now. That's very true, yeah. Um, to like, oh, I want to record a, uh, on this song real quick. Let me just arm up these drums yeah. and fucking go. That's like my ultimate goal is to be able to do that. Because right now, like my, our kid, our space is over at my parents' house. And um, which I can set up a small thing over there. But like I, I have a lot of stuff that I have at the studio that I want to mess with and toy with and can't really yeah and like get the tones of the of the drums with and i can't really necessarily do that yeah when i'm it's at my parents house i can always record it there and come back and like dial it in and but if like there's a there's something that i notice in the studio like i want to like move a mic or yeah change a drum or put something on the drum or something For like real, that yeah i won't know until i get back to my house <laughs> or my apartment rather. yeah that's true and so at some point i would like to uh have a space like what you have here to actually do that um but you can to- fucking bring drums here and track them if you fucking want yeah go thought ahead <laughs> thought about it right there i know i thought about it it's been in the back of my mind. Yeah. But uh But no, I mean another white lie. I don't want to get too off the question, but like Yeah. Um I think another white lie as far as like the meaning of the song, I'm not I'm not particularly sure to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Um but I think it was just I wrote it the same day as on the men. Um Oh yeah. And I think I just wanted to write a song that was just like uh to somebody who, you know, thinks they can get the better of you or whatever, who thinks that they own you in a way or control the way you feel or something or something. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone, but just something in your life or whatever yeah. that you feel is just like maybe thinks they have something on you in some way. So it's like, fuck you. Like, you don't, you don't know shit. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. Like, this is my life or whatever. Like, this is like my, uh, my journey, bro. You know, (laughs) it's like, I'll do what I want. And I think that that's like kind of what that song is. It's just like a fuck you to people or I don't know, things in your life that maybe are not, Mm -hmm. uh, that you don't want to let control you. Uh, which seems to be a theme to me, you know, comes off as a little like, you know, cringy in the future because I'm like I don't know I'm not that confident this song's very confident mm-hmm. I'm not that confident I think I'm I'm pretty content with the way I feel about things a lot of the time yeah but you know I don't know I don't have that demeanor I guess I am that confident but I don't have that demean that yeah. demeanor about myself I'm not like I'm not as like aggressive as that song comes <laughs> yeah. off you know what I'm saying yeah. this yeah. song is more aggressive than than me in real life I yeah. think my thoughts are that aggressive. Yeah. My feelings are aggressive like that. Well, it's like, but they're not, I'm he, not like it's, that. It's like Liam know. Neeson. Everyone thinks he's a hitman, but he's really well, just, a, he's just a nice, he's just a he's really just nice, a nice guy. guy from Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. He actually lives in Poughkeepsie. Well, he had a house. Yeah. In does he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Paul Rudd lives in Rhinebeck with, yeah. uh, and then he owns a candy store with Jeffrey Dean Morgan down there. I, I did know that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Males both have houses down south, so. yeah. south New York. So. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, 
They're going to hear this and be like, no, don't fucking tell everyone. What don't the go fuck? There. What the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, art is just, it's not necessarily real life. It's, you know, not always. Well, it's real. To a extent. It's real. It's, it's just, just dramatic. Dramatized, yeah. yeah. Dramatized. Yeah. Dramatized, yeah. Yes. Whichever way you want to say it. Yeah. Uh, after watching the video more closely last night, I noticed a couple of Easter eggs I missed. Now I'm not sure if the clock, if it was a clock or a framed picture behind you in the flashback. I believed it was you looking into one of the rooms, walking into it. So yeah, yeah. is he talking about ordinary? Love? He's talking about ordinary love. Yeah, yeah, and the f- and, and the flashback. something better, and you're not alone. So the flashback. So the in ordinary love, I don't necessarily know if they are referring to an exact thing because mm. I don't know if they even understand like if it's a flashback or not. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think I don't know what exact th- what they exactly mean by flashback, but yes, when I'm walking into the room and you see my feet, yeah, right, that is a reference. That's an Easter egg, correct? Yeah. Also, the clock on the wall. In start over, and you're not alone. The clock on the wall when I'm walking down the hallway does have the same time as clocks in other videos. Yeah, correct. Um, same in the uh, hospital. Same in the hospital. That yeah. is true. Yeah, all the clocks are very much in unison. But yes, there are multiple moments. Seven forty-three, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to like you know go down all of them or whatever because that would. It would take away the fun and take away reasons for you guys to go keep watching them. But if you want to find out more of these Easter eggs, keep watching the videos and you'll find them. And if you find them, you know. We, we do put in little little things. They're all over the place. They're yeah. all over the place. There's references to other movies. There's references to other video games. There's references yeah. to shows. There's references, references to yeah. tons of shit. Yeah. yeah, they're all over the place. So go watch the videos, and if you find some references, share it with us on uh, on Discord. I, mean, I remember when we were filming for uh, Nick's movie, and you wanted to put 1974? Yeah. Or three? Whatever. whatever 1973, the, seven, right? Whenever the Halloween movie Yeah, 78, 78, 78. 78, 78, that's 78, it. 78. Yeah. Um, and he's like, Why? It's like it's just a cool it's little, Easter egg. It's a little Easter egg in there. It's nothing. Yeah, nothing. It, it doesn't even need to necessarily mean anything no. for the actual story. It's just something that it doesn't we, have to be logical. That we have pulled inspiration from. Yeah, in in some way, and we want to pay a little homage to it. Yeah, so just throw it in there. I think that's always cool. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, that there's definitely lots of cool Easter eggs. Yeah. Referencing other videos that we've made and other stuff that we like. Yeah. Um, and my brother, with the last question here, <laughs> what a troll. Is it true that there's a place in a man's head that when you shoot it, it will blow up? That's from... <laughs> that is from Hot Fuzz. <laughs> God. Uh, Hot Fuzz. That was... That's the, uh, yeah, those guys, yeah, 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 those the Shaun guys. of the Dead guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's them. Yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna watch that again. Shaun Hot Fuzz is Dead. amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, I like Shaun of the Dead more, but Hot Fuzz. most people do. I prefer Hot Fuzz. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I like Shaun of the Dead. It's another Austin recommended movie. <laughs> I like Shaun of the Dead. I like Shaun of the Dead. I've always liked Shaun of the Dead. But I do think, as a film, I think Shaun of the Dead becomes a little... You ever love a first half of a movie and you kind of love the second half? Oh, yeah. A I feel lot, the same way. I feel the same way with Shaun of the Dead as I do, like... You know, like Batman Begins. Yeah. I think the first half of Batman Begins is really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. The second half is not that yeah. great. Yeah. I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. like there, There's a lot of movies like that. Yeah, there's a ton of movies like that. Like, The Dark Knight. The first half, boring as fuck. 
And then the second half is awesome as shit. Yeah. The only time that like the Dark Knight is just is what it is. Whenever Joker is on screen, Dark Knight for me is like Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. And then anytime I, after that yeah. I'm like All right. See, I I love Two Face in that movie, bro. I just feel yeah. like they underutilized him. Yeah. He's so underutilized. Yeah. I think that often. Like Aaron Eckhart <laughs> fucking crushed it. Yeah. And he's just He's uh it was only in there for like I understand you dies like, in like five minutes. You're you're building up to that, but like We should have made a whole on. movie after that. Yeah, dude. Like we needed a yeah. whole movie of that character. And yeah. dude, don't get me don't even get me started. The Dark Knight Rises is fucking stupid. Could could you imagine if stupid. it was stupid? If it wasn't being it was two faced the entire movie. Yeah, it would have been way better. Yeah. And I love Tom Hardy. And his Bane's cool as fuck. Don't get me it, wrong. It I know it ain't my comic fucking accurate. Mind. It's not comic accurate. But it it's blew, cool. It blew my fucking mind when I realized that that was Tom Hardy. Really? I, I didn't know that that was hmm. Tom Hardy. for the, Like, it didn't click with me. I was like, oh my uh, God. Yeah. Okay. That is, he's fucking huge. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> he like packed on a fuck ton for that yeah. role. Same with Christian Bale. Yeah. Christian Bale was big. He was big, but the costume didn't do him any favors. The costume yeah. is very slimming. Yeah. Well, it's black. Black is slimming. Yeah, that's true. Why? Why? That's why Ben Affleck. Ben looks Affleck's so, so big. Hulking, dude. It's it's like a gray, yeah. so you get like some highlights in it. But yeah, that's true. But yeah, it's no uh, Christian Bale got fucking because mm-hmm. that and that's crazy because he like six months prior was the smallest he ever was for yeah. the machinist. Yep. And then he got uh, the biggest he was for the Dark Knight Rides. Which is insane. Yeah. And then I asked like shortly after that, I believe it was um he did the role for Vice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Vice. he got where he got like he really played Cheney. Cheney. He played yeah. Dick Cheney. Yeah. hmm That was a great movie too. I didn't see it. No. No, I never saw it. Saw the trailer. Very good. I mean it it's Yeah. It makes you think. I'll put it that way. Mm. I really, I really like scary movies. Yeah. I like scary movies. I like scary movies and superhero movies. Well, if you want a real life scary yeah. movie, then Vice is one. <laughs> That's yeah. It's Nico, lo- Nico's always showing me like really cool like crime movies and stuff. I know he's really into them. Yeah. yeah. I tried. I try. I really do. Yeah. I try. Yeah. History movies are not my forte. No. I like Quentin Tarantino's version of history movies. But yeah. Oh, I watched. I like Glorious. what he does. I watched the Glorious history. Bastards a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I because love- real history is boring. Mm-hmm. And Quentin Tarantino can take like history and go, hey, what if this, this happened? happened? Instead, yeah. you know, like that's cool as fuck. Like he did that with Django. He did that with yeah. oh my god, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Because he he pretty much does that with everything. Every movie, yeah, right? he yeah. does his own twist on history. On history, it's very cool. It's way more entertaining. Yeah. Because you know how history went. Well, it's, you kind of already have like, you know, it it plays on the thing of like, let the audience think. That they like, have it all they, figured out. They they know where the movie's going exactly. and then flip it on its head. Yeah. Subverting expectations. That is how you make good so, film. That is literally. So that's probably why. That's the key to making good movies. Yeah. Because you. Subverting expectations. You're like, oh, this is, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And then it doesn't. Yeah. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did that perfectly oh with my the Manson. That's what, yeah. Don't say anything for people who haven't seen it, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Actually, you know what? Every single Quentin Tarantino movie you need to go watch. All oh, of yeah. them. All yeah. of them, including like True, Mo- True Romance and shit. Yeah. Oh, what do you think God. his uh, 10th movie is going to be? Uh, They already announced what it is. It's called. Really? Yeah. Something about a writer. Hmm. Yeah, something about a writer. Interesting. I can't remember what it's called. Everyone thought it was going to be Kill Bill. I thought it was going to be Kill Bill 3 as well. Sadly, it wasn't. But it is called. Unless he counts Kill Bill 1 and 2 as its own thing. Its own movie. Just. Does he? He might. I don't think he Yeah, I think. Yeah, no, I don't think. Because he was on on, uh, Joe Rogan a couple years ago. Yeah. And I think he does count them as separate movies. I I like yeah. Uh, so right here it says Quentin Tarantino has announced his tenth or eleventh, depending on how you count the Kill Bill films. Yeah. Okay. He counts them as one. Oh. Okay. He counts them as one. Okay. Uh, his final film will be called The Movie Critic. When is that? When is that expected? Next year. 
Really? Yeah. Oh wow. It'll be called and the. the do you think he's gonna be done? No. You don't think? Absolutely not. No. How many times did Ben Affleck say he was done playing Batman? That's fair. Yeah. Yo, Quentin Quentin Tarantino would be an interesting fellow to talk to. He is very interesting. Yeah. The way he looks at things. Honestly. I mean, how many fucking times did they say they were like done making Star Wars movies? <laughs> like twelve times. Like. <laughs> well, if you're every talk- single time they make a trilogy, they're like, "This is it." Yeah. Well, the original creator of fucking Star Wars, Lucas. Was like, yeah, George he Lucas. was he was done, but. You know, once, rightfully once, so. Once you once you sell that to Disney, it's all it's all over. Yeah, you might as well just sell your soul to the devil. You're just like, all right. Which yeah. I mean, it's in. So, for being honest, the actual writer of that franchise was done. But uh, that's true. Disney was like, nope. Oh, Disney. Sees, we want them toys. Yeah, no, bro. They want those toys. They want that money. Yeah. They want the subscribers, even though they lost the thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands. You have in here for making the terrible content that they yeah. make. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm not, yeah, yeah. dude. I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I fucking cannot stand anything Disney has done with Star Wars. Yeah. I don't like any of it. Like the I Force Awakens. Bleh. The last Star Wars that I saw yeah, was they're all bad. The Eighth one. So they made seven. Which was well, Disney made seven, eight. And oh, that okay. Was so you saw the I... the Ryan Johnson shit. Yeah. You saw. And I was like, you saw Leia floating in space. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'm tapping out, dude. That's what did she a... say, dude? Oh, when when they go to the planet and the one girl goes, I just want to put my fist through this whole giant, beautiful. What did she say? <laughs> wretched beautiful town or whatever oh no <laughs> everything about that movie dude is horrible everything so disney has done with star wars has yeah. been horrible yeah and like i keep hearing and i'm not like, even a star wars fan i, I keep hearing but like, i know everybody talking about like the mandalorian and stuff and how good it is i'm like i don't yeah. care I, I feel like just in comparison it's got to be good yeah. that's how i felt right yeah. just in comparison it's probably good like, and all I ever hear is about Darth Vader. And it's like, yeah, of course you think Darth Vader's cool. Like, everyone loves seeing the fucking villain yeah. that created villains practically yeah, on screen doing cool shit that they couldn't do practically For back sure. in the day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so. that's why the first six are actually good. Because yeah. they uh, either A, tell the story of Darth Vader in his yeah. evil reign, or they tell the story of him becoming the evil yeah. leader that he became. Yeah. So, like... No shit, all the stuff after that's not going to be as interesting. Yeah. yeah. No shit. <laughs> yeah. So, I, and if you're a fan of it, fine. No. Great. But no. for us, dude. Yeah. I, no, I this mean, is our podcast. We can. <laughs> yeah. No. I not, don't, I'm not into it. <laughs> not my thing. Yep. And yeah. T- even with uh, Lord of the Rings. Ugh. Yeah. Like. Outside of the original, I mean, you're gonna three lose movies, me a little bit here. Outside, of, well, it's the same kind of thing. Outside of the three original movies, like even the Hobbit, because I yeah. I feel that way about the the prequels to Star Wars too. Like, yeah, they're all right, they're cool. Yeah, I like I like seeing the the uh, character. The about, Hobbit. Uh, no, I'm talking about Star Wars. So uh, I'm talking. Yes. So, so are we uh, talking about the Hobbit, or are we talking yeah, about the yeah. the the, tre- the prequel trilogy? Well, it's a, the prequel trilogy to Star Wars, like one, two, and three. Right. So there is a it, is a, the Hobbit is like the prequel trilogy to right. Lord of the Rings. Right. Okay. So it's the yeah, same yeah. kind of thing. So, so like the Lord of the Rings. Jar. Lord of the Rings came out first, and then the Hobbits came out. Same thing with Star Wars, like Star Wars three, four, or one, two, and three, or four, five, six. Right? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then one, two, and three came out. Jesus. Yeah. So, and I feel the same way about both franchises. Mm-hmm. It was like the prequels are like, okay, I, yeah, all right, but like nothing compares to the, the first three movies, and then, and then they do the, like the shows and shit after, and was like, you're losing me. You're losing me. I can't do it. So wait, they have shows now for Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Too? Oh yeah. Yeah. Is yep. it more than just the Rings of Power? That's what it is. There's oh okay, that's it. Yeah, and yeah. when I haven't, I've I watched one episode and I was like, nope, I haven't. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, Not I'm interested, good. man. I'm good, man. Not interested. I'm good. Amazon can stick to sending me my shit when I order it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, yeah. Uh, I, dude, it's all good. Yeah. Amazon, That's okay. Amazon hasn't made like anything <laughs> that I've seen that I that attracts me. What I will yeah. say, um, one that you should look at they make really good thriller stuff is on hulu hulu exclusives or originals wait it's not shutter is it no no okay it's a like there was one called i think it was run oh run yeah i've watched run that's amazon that's hulu that's a hulu original so it's hulu yeah that's what i said is amazon hulu no 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 amazon has their own amazon original oh yeah and I, anything that Amazon makes, I'm not really a fan of. Oh, okay. But you but do I, like what Hulu. I'm saying. I'm saying oh. a company that does make gotcha. like original okay. stuff is Hulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, do. they make really good Run, thriller. Run was great. There was an, there's another one that I haven't seen yet. It's like some alien. F- and it's one of those things that you could watch the trailer and oh, uh, no. get things oh, no. spoiled. No, 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 no. Was Are it the you? alien? Oh, no. What is it? Is it the one? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, shit. The girl? Yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, it wasn't good. Mm-mm. Oh Mm-mm. no, really? Mm-mm. You might like it. I'm gonna go watch ahead and it. watch it. I haven't watched <laughs> Me it yet. Me and Nico but... watched it the other night, and we both went. That was fucking dumb. And then we <laughs> went yeah, and did something else. Is she on? She's like on the. It like breaks into her house or something. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, that's the movie. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Really? No, I did not like that. I thought it was very not good. Because you, you and I, because you and I have like, a similar. Okay. Feeling. Technically, yes, it's a cool film because like the effects and the camera work and all the tricks they do. Yes. Narratively, no. Well, that's the most important part. Exactly. Narrative. Narratively, no. Oh. It was a miss for me. It was Damn. like a complete miss. I was like, nah. I don't know. Damn. I fell asleep. <laughs> Damn. I fell asleep for like oh, a I saw short that, minute. I saw that trailer. Nico the watched day. the whole thing and he was like, ugh, this is terrible. I was like, yeah, I fell asleep. Yeah, Bummer. it's it's very boring and a little slow. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Bummer. I'm wrong. Maybe I gotta rewatch it. Cause like I didn't like Batman versus Superman when I first saw that. Granted, there That's was fair. like 35 minutes missing from it. Yeah. But I don't know. For the most part. I don't know. I didn't there, like it. There's um there's another one with Ben Affleck in it that he did for Hulu. Oh, that looked cool. That one was cool. I didn't watch that. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's 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 a little it's a little uh, he's sense. a he plays a weird fucking character in that one. Really? Oh yeah, like like unsettling, like very much like um. You ever seen Gone Girl? Yeah, I've seen Gone Girl. Kind of like <laughs> a character like that where you you don't know how to feel about her if he actually did something. Gone Girl's really weird. Oh yeah, it's a weird movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that one. Though. Me that, too. That I one's, really do. That one's cool. Yeah, Ben Affleck. I, I like how I like how he's just like, dude, what the fuck? I didn't do this shit. He's good at choosing his films. I think yeah. he's always good at the roles he chooses to do. Yeah, they're always very interesting. It's always like a he, role where you're he like, he directed that one too, right? Gone Girl. Yeah, I'm pretty Did sure he, he directed direct Gone Girl. He might have directed. I don't know. I know he wrote Goodwill Hunting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote that um, with uh, Matt with Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah. He wrote Which is crazy because that was their first. Yeah, movie ever that they, they they wrote. Yeah, don't you have like family members or family friends who like to babysit them? Yeah, so um, John Felino, um, his friend, he was vocalist for Animal. Sean, his, I believe it's his grandmother. Oh, okay. Um, is neighbors with. And, and good friends with, um, oh shit, what was it? It was either like her good friend, like her neighbor who used to babysit them oh. as they, they were kids. Right. So either way, it's like you're only like six people away from people who used to babysit Ben Affleck. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's so, cool. So, that's cool in itself. I think that's what it was. So yeah. Sean's grandmother's neighbor, um, who were good friends, uh, she used to babysit them that's as cool. boys 
and they, I guess they have, she has a picture of them on the beach. And they, I guess they would always get bullied when they were younger because mm. they wanted to be actors. Oh. And they would always get bullied because, oh, it's okay. And Lil Beal. And now I, I think he also said that that lady, there's some, her husband, um, is like owns like a very, um, expensive uh what is it not expensive just a a well-known um machine yeah mechanic just a thing i don't know like they make like big dump trucks and okay like one of those companies um they live now next to judge judy is what i've heard oh that's weird yeah Mm. so So they're uh, sticking with the celebrities now so I, I I don't know. They live in the same neighborhood that next to uh, Judge Judy. That's wild. So, um, I don't know if I have that that correct. Yeah, it's whatever. Sean, Close enough. Sean, if you're hearing yeah. that, let us know if that's correct. Yeah, I mean, it's close <laughs> but, enough if you ask but, me. But yeah, um, yeah, no, that's really cool. I just I thought it was funny mm-hmm. that they used to get bullied as kids. That's silly. But yeah, I mean, movies, movies, uh, movies are weird. You know, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of really cool things that they could do technically, and like it's like impressive and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you can't captivate with a good story, yeah, you've lost the audience. I mean, right. you've lost me. Oh, I, yeah. I, I'm gone. You know. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with music too. It's like if it doesn't. Uh, who is it? Dave Grohl that says if a song doesn't work on an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. For sure. Kind of I mean, you know, that's kind of like that. But I mean, like, I think like it really mainly just comes down to like what the lyrics are, you know? Yeah. As long as the lyrics are good, as yeah. long as you're singing them, and you, know, you can tell like what we were saying at the beginning, as long as you could feel what yeah. is being said. Because take all, away all the, like the VFX and shit if you don't have like a good story. Yeah, exactly. The bones. The bones of it. Yeah. Um, Like... I'm sure if we watch Zack Snyder's Justice League without all the CGI, I'm sure we would still fucking love it. Absolutely, you know, because it's a great hero story, man. It's yeah, you, fucking... you you would you would you'd still resonate with it. Yes, despite absolutely. all the cool visuals yeah. and the fucking crazy war scenes mm-hmm. and the old gods and shit. Like, absolutely, take all that away, you still have a very emotional. Yeah, something uh, passionate. Anybody story. can connect to that. You know, yeah, yeah. and something that uh, a lot yeah. of us can relate to. Absolutely. You know, speaking of things we can all relate to, mm. see that Grand Theft Auto Six trailer broke the YouTube world record of having more views in 24 hours than any video in the history of YouTube. Yep, <laughs> 70 million views in 24 hours. That is <laughs> insane. <laughs> Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm excited for the. the it's Rockstar, right? They're still yeah, making, yeah, of course. They're they're like fuck yeah, let's do I'm it. I'm fucking ready for the gameplay reveal. I can't wait to see the the showcase. When does that come out? I don't know. The game comes out in 2025. So 25, wow, 25. Okay. So a whole other year. Pretty and it's much. debuting on Xbox, PS4. No, I'm sorry, Xbox Series X and PS5, and PC is gonna come like a year later. No PS4, Xbox One? No. No, no next gen. Wow. Next gen. Next gen only. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. when you look at the... That's did the you fir- watch the trailer? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. You can't put that shit on. Yeah. See the well, hair physics? You can't put that shit on every character in yeah. last gen. Well, well, I know in the past they've done for like like the new Call of Duties because they're still coming out. Oh, like, like they PS4. dumb it down? They dumb it down. No, yeah. dude. Yeah. That's wrong. That's yeah. like false advertisement. Yeah. Uh, dude, they should I be remember... Able to, they, I remember, when Black, Ops, I remember when Black Ops 4 <laughs> came out and it, they were still doing yeah. it on PS3. Oh, no. I remember and this too. Would, yeah, it looked it like was, shit. They, and they couldn't do like some of the stuff, like the movements and stuff because the, the PS3 just couldn't, couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. So you were just kind of fucked. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> just it like, looked horrible. Bro, just like don't put it on that console. Yeah. So uh, that was like the last one and they're like, okay, yeah. PS4 only. Dude. So that's I I wonder so I wonder if GTA is like the first time that like a big franchised um video game will only be on the next gen consoles. No, it's not because guess what? Guess how many fucking generations GTA 5 was on? 
How many? Three. <laughs> well, no, I'm three. saying three. Well, no, I'm saying yeah, but GTA Five uh, has been out for like 15 years. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I've seen, I've see seen. the issue here. Yeah. Yeah, and they've milked that shit. Gotcha. They keep like bumping the shader like ten percent every generation ago. Gotcha. Remaster. It's so stupid. <laughs> Dude, it's like it's oh god. Yeah. I stand with all GTA fans when I say, finally, yeah. Jesus, because they have done nothing but take GTA five and repackage it and go, sixty dollars, please, <laughs> for like ten years. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, I, I didn't I, buy it. Yeah. I was well, like, I no thanks. I'm not going to buy the same game again. Like That, that is one thing that... Yeah. I'm glad that they're doing like cross-gen stuff. Because if you wanted to play with anybody like that, like any of your friends, yeah. it was always the worst thing. It was like, oh, what, what system are you on? You have this game? What system are you on? Yeah. If you had different systems, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And like, I don't have it for that. Yeah, and if you were like the cool kid in school mm-hmm. that had all of them, you had like, you could have the uh, yeah. Xbox or the PlayStation. You're like, oh, I'll fucking buy it. But the fact that you had to buy the game twice, yeah, was so fucking it sucked. So it, yeah. I like that. Will Will GTA be cross gen? I don't know. Yeah, it's way too early. I mean, like, yeah. if it's I on imagine. the fucking new consoles, probably. I but imagine. it's just insane to me that they were on PS4. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> It's PS3. PS3. Yeah. GTA 5 was on PS3. Yeah. Wasn't it? No. No, 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 no. No, it was. I had it on PS3. GTA 5 on PS3. Yeah, I had it on no. PS3. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Hang on a minute. No way. Yeah. No. I had it on PS3. No. Mm-hmm. Hang on. This can't yep. be right. Yep. We're doing some digging now. It looked horrible, but it, cause I remember going to the PS4 and being like, oh my God. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Talk about triple dipping. Yeah. What they did was really greedy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Rockstar Games, but that's greedy as fuck. Yeah. You released a game but for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, and then you remastered it for but the what, PlayStation 4, and well, then you remastered it again <laughs> for the PlayStation 5. But what I'm saying what is, is that are they when they released GTA 6? Is it only going to be on the PlayStation 5 or are they going to release it for the PS4 as well? Because that's been like the the thing right now is that oh. any new game well, comes out on the it PS5. It will not be available on the, the PS4. Gotcha. It will not be. So that's what but I was... you bet your ass when the P- PlayStation 6 <laughs> comes out, they're going to fucking repackage it and yeah. give you the same game again and go, yeah. $60, please. Yeah. It's so fucked. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I yeah. get it. I understand. But, dude, yeah. come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like, stop it. You, mm-hmm. you add a couple well, of shaders and textures, and then you say it's remastered. It's not. <laughs> you keep changing online, but I'm not an online player. I don't play yeah. online. I yeah. play the games for the story. I want to play a good story. I want to I want to go crazy over the physics for two weeks and then yeah. finish the game and never touch it again. <laughs> so make me another one. <laughs> Come yeah. on, make another game. Stop well, giving I'm, me the I'm, same one. I'm I don't sure know. for it's just crazy. That kind of game it obviously takes fucking years. Well, yeah. That's fucking yeah. crazy. Making an interactive mm-hmm. CGI world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, what is the what is the time gap? Actually, I'm curious. What's the time gap? So, Red Dead Redemption. I mean, sorry, GTA Four. Okay, 2014. It, okay, 2014 is when GTA Four came out. Mm-hmm. No, 2000. Sorry, GTA Five came out in 2014. So eight. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, Dude, that's 14. Almost so six 10. years. It only took six years for them to make GTA 5. And then but when did Red Dead? When did Red Dead Redemption? That's a different out? studio. It's Red Dead. It's Rockstar, but it's a different. Oh. It's a different part of it. Interesting. Wow. They so are all. So together. it's gonna be up. It's gonna be ten years. That's fucked. <laughs> That's fucked. That just means they were way too busy double, 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 and then double, and then double dipping again, <laughs> and going, whoa, we can really make money on this GTA Five thing, and then they well, just kept G- fucking releasing the game. Yeah, I remember GTA Five was like the that was like the game that everyone yeah everyone talked about. Yeah, like, I mean Red Dead Redemption way fucking better, but like, yeah. <laughs> but when they came out with GTA, when they came out with the PlayStation Five, mm-hmm. and then we were all watching the fucking showcase. I remember watching it mm-hmm. during COVID. Yep, and they had the fucking showcase, and they're going, "Here's GTA Five again." And I was like, "No." I was like, I thought they were gonna because I saw we all knew that Rockstar was gonna be at that showcase, oh, so we so were all excited. We're like, up. here comes GTA Six, baby! And yeah. they're like, no, it's just GTA Five re remastered. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. god yeah, damn so it! I, yeah, I had yeah. GTA Five on the PS3, and then I remember getting on the PS4 years later. Dude, you unlocked and, a memory, and I, I forgot like, it was on PS3. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, it's too old. Yeah, make a new game. Yeah, <laughs> fuck God. PS3. But yeah, no, I I remember. Yeah, Black Ops Four was the last Call of Duty, and I I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I need to get a PS4. Speaking of buying a system, I remember this unlocked another memory. Um, because last week I was talking about how it always, <laughs> when I got GTA, I like slipped it out of the thing. Oh yeah, yeah. How I actually got my PS3 or PS4 to begin with is I, my parents every week, a couple days out of the week would give me lunch money. It was like five bucks or so. And I would just pocket it and Hmm. just not eat lunch (laughs) for months until I had enough to buy a PlayStation 4. And uh, I saved up for many, many months. That's and, really silly, Tyler. And just getting like... What did you eat? Oh, I had friends that wouldn't eat their food, so I just... Oh, my take God. It and, also, and you can it. get a PlayStation? Also, I could get a PlayStation oh 4. That's how dedicated I was. I wasn't that dedicated or desperate, yep. whichever word you want to yep. use for that. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, that's how I afforded my, my PS4 and... Mm. It came with Uncharted. Oh, it was like that. I have that one. Yeah. So that one was that was the game. I never played it though. <laughs> Uncharted Four. Actually, no. What was it? It was was it Uncharted? It might have been. Was it, it was the Nathan it was, Drake one? The blue one I have. No, no that's not Uncharted. PS Four. The P. No. Okay. So it wasn't Uncharted. It was. It was like a gray, not gray, like a tan, like a beige. Box oh, with black font. I thought it was an Uncharted, but I don't. I don't know. Was it a PS4 or PS3? It was a PS4. Okay, so it's definitely not Uncharted. No, I don't know what it was then. Yeah, it's Uncharted. The the PS4 game to come out for Uncharted was Uncharted Thieves End. Thieves End, yeah. Which is four? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a different game. I don't know. But tan. Yeah, it was like it came the PS4. You know how like they do the promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff. It was a tan and it had a black font. And Interesting. Then there was a single character in the middle. It was hmm. like a silhouette of them. Hmm. That sounds like Uncharted Three, but maybe it is. It I, wouldn't be for PS4. No, 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 no. Look no. it up. Look, look up PS4. Yeah, what is it like the bundles? Bundles. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it was like a beige. With black font. Um, Very similar to the color of your sweatshirt. Oh. Um, oh, this is dumb. Let me just go to images. Is that going to work? What about PS4 packaging? It was the PS4... Regular one, right? The... Is there a slim one? There is a slim. I think it was that. The slim? I think. It was like the, it wasn't the big old 
or no. Was your PlayStation color to color? No. Oh. It was just. And I have no idea. It was a normal one, but it came with a game. It has. It was in the promotional packaging and stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I really don't know because the only ones that I know of are the ones that look. What if you just look up PS4? I am looking it up. I don't see anything. No. So I see that The Last of Us, Uncharted Four, Horizon. What is, a, what is Uncharted Four? Uncharted Four is. Let like, me let me see it. Well, there's the Slim. Yeah, no, it's not that one. And then no. that's Uncharted 4. But I have the actual Uncharted PlayStation. The, yeah. The blue one. With the blue one. Yeah, yeah the blue PlayStation. Yeah, it's not that. Um, I, I'm trying to remember. I thought it was an Uncharted game, but I, I guess not. Was it Ghost? I Ghost of... Oh, no, that's newer. That's no. Tsushima. Yeah, that's not that one. I don't know, man. I'll I'll find it. Yeah, I don't off, see it off, off, off the podcast, but I don't see it nowhere. Yeah, I'll find it at some. There's point. so many different bundles. Oh yeah, they they had one for yeah. pretty much any game you wanted, and it it wasn't. Some of them had the actual like console yeah ones, which was cool, hmm. or a controller. They yeah, had, like the special controller. Yeah, mine has the controller and the console. I, I miss think- games like fucking Stuntman. Do you remember Stuntman? Is that the one that you just like jumped off of? You did stunts for like movies. So you were like a stuntman in a film and you oh, had that's to like. Funny. That's fun. It gave you like. Do you remember the iPhone app? Or there's the... mine. That's mine. Yeah. That it. Okay. That's the one I have. So that's. That's the guy on the front. That's the guy on the front? Yeah. But it. But your PlayStation was normal? My PlayStation was normal. Okay, so that was the guy in the front. The Uncharted logo was black, and then the background was tan. That's a PS3, my guy. No. Yeah, it is. You're no. thinking of the Uncharted 3 PlayStation. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're, ta- you're thinking of Uncharted 3. I didn't know because I had an Assassin's PlayStation. Creed PlayStation. I had the Assassin's Creed 3 PlayStation. What? Yeah, but it might be Uncharted 3, but that was the guy on the front. Are you sure it's not that game right there? No. Oh, maybe. Oh, look up the PS4 version. If there, there was. isn't a PS. Oh, it's this one. The Nathan Drake collection. That's it. There you go. There it is. So you got the Nathan Drake collection. Yeah. PS4. Yes. Okay. That was it. Nathan Drake. I thought it was Uncharted. Collection PS4. Yeah, that's the one that oh, I, okay. I got. That was the one that was on sale at the time. I think it was 300 bucks. And I saved up. Yeah, there you go. That, that is, is it. the one. There you go. There we it found is. found it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it took I don't know enough. why it was that important to find, yeah. but I found it. But yeah, that one was, what, $299 when it, when it was on sale? Yeah, so the Best Nathan... Buy and I, I, Went and saved all my. Yeah, it comes with Uncharted one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. So and then I, they came out with Uncharted four. Yeah, so I never played the Uncharted games. I've only extensively. I've only, I, I toyed with them. I've but. only played them once, but I played all of them. Yeah, they're very good. And, Same people uh, that make The Last of Us. Yeah, very good. And um, so yeah, that that was, I saved up for many months to get that. And it was it was the only reason that I got that one is the old, it was the one on sale at the time. Oh my god! And uh, so that that's what I, I need did. my lunch. I couldn't do that. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I starved. Well, I knew because I had lunch like a late lunch, so I knew that like it was only two more hours, and then I could just go get food after. Yeah, I'd rather you know have my PlayStation, and I knew that my friends didn't know didn't always like finish their food, so no, for real, I would just pick off them <laughs> and they were done but yeah is there any more questions uh that's a good question no that's it no that's yeah, it i think we're cool yeah we could probably wrap this up yeah it's pretty it's done good. cool uh yeah so um thank you guys for listening uh you go to the brokenview.com slash shop for 10 percent off your order use tbv podcast um, off any merch item or CD or album, or whatever, mm-hmm. anything on the shop is 10% off. Um, it goes a long way to supporting um, 
our band. Uh, Indeed. Uh, yes. And, and um, we're grateful for every, every single one of you listening, streaming, liking, commenting. Um, couldn't be here without you. So. Oh, yeah. And if you, you know, if you guys are part of the membership on our YouTube members, um, you can go, what members get to chat with us? What's that one again? It's the uh, never super fan. Super fan. That's yeah. it. Five dollar tier. That's right. So you become a uh, a super fan or up on our YouTube membership. You can come chat with us tonight. I'm always on there. Some of the other guys pop in from time to time. It's usually just me, but I'll be on there. Yep. So I'll see you guys tonight if you are uh, going to be doing that. Uh, don't forget to join our Discord when you become a member and all that stuff. Yeah, you can message us anytime. Uh, chat with the other uh, members. Mm-hmm. We have a little community that's growing on there. Mm-hmm. So, And if you guys want your questions answered on the podcast next Friday, please leave them in the comments of this video below. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks for listening. Yes. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye.